What's going on, Max? What's up? You We're know, back. um, uh, getting excited, getting excited. It's Wednesday. We're recording this. Probably going to release this today as well. Dark Nitro Challenge, man. I mean, I can't help but get excited about this race because it's going to be good. You know what? I don't think we're even going to dilly dally with all this type of stuff. We're just going to get right into it because this podcast is all about you and I geeking out on the Dark Nitro Challenge, the 25th Dark Nitro Challenge. We're going to have a look back at some of the, uh, you, you know what? Let me just drop that intro. As soon as I find it, I'll drop it, you know, and then uh, we can get cracking. Nitro is the glory, but e buggy pays the bills. Welcome to the No Name RC Podcast. Get ready for some serious bench racing. But be warned, we speak our minds, express our thoughts, and sometimes things can get a little rowdy. Hate, and he just was influenced by the hate coming from the left, the hate coming from the right. And let's get back to more club racing and less of this Hard not to be arrogant when you're always right. Yeah. See what I mean? That's exactly why people call you arrogant, Max. You may not agree with everything we say, but it's definitely worth a listen. And our pick, can you stop whatever you're doing? Join your host, Leslie the Great, with co-hosts and guests as they get together <laughs> to chat our scene. Hey, after that race that I watched this morning, I have to talk about it. Hundred bucks right here, hundred dollar throw. Oh no! <laughs> I like this. Yes, 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 indeed. Nitro is the glory, but e buggy pays the bills. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to episode number two seventy six of the No Name RC Podcast. And this week, we are geeking out on the 25th uh, version of the Dirt Nitro Challenge, starting in about 15 minutes, I would say, unless practice started at 7. Uh, uh, but hey, welcome here to Geek Out on uh, the DNC. Uh, I am your host, Keenan White, a.k.a. Left of Great. And over there is uh, Lumberjack Man, the <laughs> professor of everything, Maximus Mortimus. Uh, what's up, Max? How are you? Thank you. Uh, thank you for your time and appreciation and all that type of stuff. So good post this weekend. Uh, we're not doing any RC news or anything like that this weekend. So we're, get, we're doing a whole straight just DNC geek out. Uh, and then uh, obviously the race is happening this weekend. Uh, and then, yeah, we'll, we'll get, but we'll, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll catch up a little bit about what you've been up to. Uh, I just, I'm, I'm really excited for this race. I'm really excited, Max. I'm, I'm excited as just because I'm look, yeah, I'm excited. It's later, it's later this year than usually. So I, I think we've kind of like been waiting for this to happen earlier. So mm -hmm. our body is just like needs it to happen already. Yeah. Yeah. And then of course, uh, you know, you see all the posts and everybody being out there early and people getting there and I'm like, I miss all of that. But to be honest, I, even if I was going to it, I don't think that I would have been able to go. But we'll talk about that uh, because of our plans that we have coming. I have some. I am going to be in America this weekend, but not in uh, uh, DNC. All right. Well, Max. With that said, let's stop pitter pattering around. Let's get on with this. We'd like to say thank you to all of our NNRC squad around the world. Thank you, everybody. I know a lot of people will be tuning into this race from around the world. We hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, thank you for all the support. We greatly appreciate it. We're going to um, be watching it. I'm going to be following as good as I can. Uh, and hopefully Max will be making some great posts about it. So, it's, it's, you know, check out our Facebook page. And, you know, if anything happens, Max will be on it, I'm sure. Uh, thank you to all of the NNRC patrons and YouTube members from around the world. Uh, I'll be sharing the links so you guys can find it as well. If you wish to support the podcast, you can. Links for, uh, financially a little bit. You can become a patron, get things like early release, and you won't have to sift through Facebook to get those posts and all that stuff. I'll post those links there for you. You can do that with links in the written description. A big thank you to all of our sponsors. They are Invisible Speed, 
High Tech RC, Corsa Tech USA, Sidewinder Fuel, Mayako Beach RC, Techno RC, Clinic RC, Stacked RC, Racecraft USA, RC Box Club, Call RC Elite RC Productions, the Florida RC Championships. Uh, shout out to RC Body, Harm, Body Armor, uh, my buddy Gene Strout Jr. over there at SJ Racing Builds, House of RC, RCGP. Shout out to our drivers. Good luck to uh, David Runafalk this weekend. Robert's not going. Alex is obviously on road. Matty G is on his 10 scale. Pecco and you know, obviously, and our, other, our new driver, Mason Fuller, this weekend, uh, who both can possibly win this, in my opinion. But more about that and more about all of that uh, later on. Uh, more about that all later on. If you guys want to support the podcast and maybe get you guys a little affiliate link, or help us out, get your coupon code, whatever. All the written and all the written links and coupon codes, affiliate links, all that stuff is in the written description of this podcast. Check it out; it's right there. If you listen to the audio, listen to YouTube, you can find all the links to all of our different sponsors, and we put up a lot of different links for YouTube feeds and all that type of stuff. It's all there, right in the written description. Thank you to all the sponsors; we greatly appreciate it. Thank you all for all the support, and uh, we greatly appreciate it. Quick shout outs. Speaking of birthdays, upcoming this Saturday is David Ronafalk's birthday. Wouldn't he love to have a birthday gift with a nitro buggy, pro truggy? I think he would want a nitro buggy win, but maybe one or two wins or a win would be good for him. Uh, or we'll see. But happy birthday to him. And uh, we have a few birthdays here. So I want to say happy birthday to a few people before we move on. Uh, happy birthday to Adam Lewis, Showtime Adam Lewis, who was an awesome guest on her at one time, good friend of JQ. Uh, Mikhail Nehem, Johnny Fescararo, Sebastian Muir, happy birthday to you. Mike Hess, happy birthday. Jason Klein, Chris Raceless, Tim Brisbane, Joey Carlson, excuse me. Uh, I will explain, you guys, excuse me, I have to cough this now. Uh, sh- happy birthday to Jimmy Woodley, my man. Classic RC cars and Ignite Design RC. Bringing gas truck back. They just dropped their uh, T4 version. Good. Happy birthday, Craig Drescher. Legend in this industry. Absolute legend. You had a lot of interaction with him when he was in the AE team. Ben Hackett. Miguel Villes. Como esta? Feliz cumpleaños, mi amigo. Mark Thomas. Ethan Mechanic. Peter Dern, all these people celebrating some birthdays. We wish you happy birthday and many, many more in the coming years. And a, a big shout out because I saw this this weekend. I know she's super happy about it. She's become a good friend, her and her husband, Josie Patashow. She won Sportsman Nitro Buggy this weekend at Buggy Man. She was so excited. I think she only started running Nitro Buggy this year because she ran E Truggy and E and Nitro Truggy, if I'm not mistaken. So kudos to her. Well done. Congratulations, Josie. And I'll see all of those guys here very soon. All right, Max. Um, enough of that. You know, I'd like to say a big thank you to our main sponsor, Invisible Speed, because they're going to bring us up to ta- bring us up to catch up with Max and I as we figure out what's going on in our lives right now in the world. Stop scrolling. You want to be Lewis Hamilton? Learn something new with Invisible Speed. You can't do everything at 100% maximum speed. You have to be smooth. I mean, when you drive a real car, if you drive a real car, how do you, do you just, when you get to a 90 degree corner to t- turn into the parking lot, do you go like that with the steering wheel? Do you like slam on the throttle and the brake? No, you probably turn the wheel smooth and get on the throttle smooth. Same thing with an RC car. If you want to learn more and make your speed visible, Stop scrolling. That's right. Stop scrolling. We have affiliate links for the Invisible Speed online course. Obviously, the book seems to be very popular. A lot of people are buying it, and that's good. That's good. I'm probably, this is my, like, display book. It's, like, stuck to that stand now. I'm going to have to probably get myself a book that I actually read. Oh, my joke. I'm not reading this book. Um, but I do want to browse through it. But it is a very good book. Everybody seems to be getting it, and the online course uh, seems to be very good as well. And people are making the best of it. All right, Max, a little bit of catch up, dude. Remember Friday when we was recording with David, like when we did that podcast, and then I said, like, Max, let's record Friday, and I said, Man, I do not feel good. 
Dude, I went like I by the end of that podcast, we started recording. I felt I was like, I don't feel good. And then um I edited it all up and put it up on YouTube. And I said I went home to get like lunch and then go sleep. So I had lunch. No, I didn't even eat lunch. I had a little bit of rice and and beans like my wife had cooked. A little bit. Like she's like, Why are you eating? I said, I don't feel good. I'm gonna go later on. I didn't get out of bed till Monday. Yeah. Dude, I haven't you got been the hit. Time for yeah, I just you, and you know, man, you I'm a dude, and when I get sick like that, I am a babe. I'm like, go on. <laughs> dude, my wife's fucking my 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 father in law, my sister in law, all these people in my house, and I'm like. Thank you. I appreciate you guys coming on here to see that I'm okay, that I'm not doing too well. But I really just want peace and quiet. Take my daughter and and I, I man, dude, I was bad, man. I was, I was just in bad, man. It was just something that hit me. Um, I am feeling great this today. Uh, yesterday I was about 80, 75, 80 percent. Today I'm like 95, and which is good because I'm supposed to be traveling tomorrow. Uh, well, not tomorrow. Sorry, I'm traveling early Friday morning because I'm going over to Fort Lauderdale, meeting up with Danny Paz, and I'm going up for the Florida RC Championships Banquet this Saturday. So that's where I'll be, and then I'll be hanging out with uh, guys Sunday. I'm not sure what we're doing. We're doing something Sunday. Then um, I'll be at Lance's Monday, Tuesday, and then I think Wednesday we head out to Jacksonville, or Callahan, sorry, for Callahan. Which is round three of the Florida RC Championships, which I went to. Um, I went to this track. Um, I want to say November. Yeah, Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. I was there for Thanksgiving. That's where I had Thanksgiving. I'm um, hoping that we have great weather because I want to actually get some practice on the track prior to that. And then I come home. Uh, no, sorry, I don't even come home. I we we finish that up on Sunday. Then Danny and I drive down to Fort Lauderdale. I spend the night in Fort Lauderdale. Then I fly out of uh, Miami to Portugal for the International Buggy Challenge that will be happening uh, during Easter. So I'll be in Portugal for two weeks. It's going to be uh, very interesting to see how Portugal is, but especially so Barcelos is like a religious stop on like some pilgrimage that people do. Like, I don't know what it is, you know, it's religion stuff, and it's part of that. So I think that uh, that's going to be interesting to see. So I'm, I'm looking forward to the International Buggy Challenge. doesn't look like we're getting as many top guys, like Noan Garo and Noan Falk, but uh, Canas, you know, all those top fast guys. Let's see. The Italians like to come over for this as well. So that's my plans. But, yeah, this weekend, dude, if you message me, I didn't. I didn't look at any RC. I didn't. I didn't look at my phone. I was sleeping in a dark room with the AC one and nobody around me. That's how bad it was. Yeah, I felt bad. Yeah, Keenan was definitely down the whole week. I didn't even know you had made posts on Facebook. I saw you yeah. got the Aussies all riled up about Femka. Yeah. I don't know. It's interesting, uh, that one, but yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't want to poke. You don't want to piss off the Australians? No, because I think I think there's like valid concern uh, of the fam, but I think it's more of an, you know, attitude thing as well, because, you know, prestige comes with people agreeing to go, but I think it's the biggest reason is just that it's the language barrier and so on. Maybe, maybe. And you, you had a quiet weekend, I would assume, just at home. If... Yeah, yeah, pretty much all weekend at home. I can't remember. I did something, but I can't remember what I did. So I, I was doing something all the time. Like, I think... I was past... doing something, but I can't remember yeah. what I did. Past two weeks, um, probably up to a month, it's just been so busy with everything. You know, are you busy this weekend? Because I'm, I'm expecting some good IC posts this weekend. Yeah, well, I don't know. <sighs> I think I might get a little bit drunk on Saturday since we have our uh, 50 year anniversary of our guild. Uh, that's cool. So you'll be hungover on Sunday. That's what you're saying. 
No, on Sunday uh, we have this um, student thing, which is called the sillis. Uh, that means that when you normally would be hungover, you drink some mimosas and you're good again. I say just keep on drinking. That's all. Yeah, that's, that's kind of how it works around here. I mean, that's how it is pretty much when you do things like that. You just you just yeah. you just don't stop. You just wake up and like let's keep on going. So you're gonna. So in other words, you're probably not gonna be functionable at all this weekend i think i'll be good because california is like 10 hours behind me so i think i'll be you know good at the time when stuff's happening okay. right. um i'll be trying to watch as much as possible but i'll be busy doing things uh so but I, i'm uh i will i think live rc starts tomorrow so uh i will i will obviously be watching that uh, and looking at that's tomorrow is uh nitro is uh truggy and e buggy day, so I'll be watching that and yeah, we'll go through and and I, I mean, I'm gonna be busy tomorrow too, but I'll be paying attention to that, I should say. And when I do have some spare time, I'll sit down and watch it. I gotta pack and get a haircut and do all that stuff and yeah, all that nice stuff, get supplies and all that shit. So yeah, man, all that good stuff, anyway. You know what, man. I think we should just get right into it because we should get right into yeah. this race review that is brought to you by High Tech RC. High Tech is coming in strong and in charge in 2024 with the introduction of our new suite of new chargers, the RDX2 200, the RDX2 800, and now the RDX4. Depending on your charger needs, High Tech gets you plugged in with the, po- with the power, multiple port fl- flexibility, and the ultimate reliability you require. You can find links for all of the high tech products or their website. Actually, you can go to www.hightechrcd.com slash where to sorry, hightechrcd slash where to buy.com. And you can find out where to buy all of your high tech goodies. All right, Maxi. So let's get right into this. The Dark Nitro Challenge. I, I'm not gonna lie. I feel weird not being there. Like I feel weird not being there, but to be honest, if I had to travel yesterday or mon- if I had to travel Monday to go to this race, which probably would have happened because I'd want to be there Tuesday, I would not have made it. But, um, man, I'm not I'm not there. Uh, first time for me since my man. I mean, well, I didn't go COVID. Obviously, I didn't go the year after. I didn't go 2021. Yeah. Uh, but I did go 2020. The la- that was like right before COVID hit. Like 2020, yeah. 2020 DNC, then COVID. Uh, yeah. But I did get to go last year. I did not, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying I did not enjoy myself last year, not because of the race, but because of the weather, uh, which was very bad. Uh, and, you know, it was, it was, it was all right. It was, you know, it just was other things that happened that year that, uh, that made it. But the year before was fun in 2020. Yeah. Three twenty twenty two was very fun. I did enjoy that, but I've been to what a few of these. Uh, I, I think four. Yeah, four, five, five. five. Yeah. So, um, this is a bucket list race. I think if you are a one eight scale enthusiast, like this is one of the races that you should go to, just to go to. You know, it. Uh, you should go enjoy it. It's it's. It, it, um, it looks like it's going to be decent weather. I did see that there's going to be a little chance of some rain, maybe Saturday. But, yeah, but I think, yeah, I, I, th- I think it's because this year, obviously, as I said before, it's moved to mm-hmm. around yeah, moved two it. weeks. Two weeks later, I'd say three weeks later, maybe. And uh, I think this time is much better for. California in general. I think, you know, well, February is really I was listening to the Wheel and Trigger podcast this morning and they had Joey on and he was just, he said that it's been a lot of rain as well in Southern California. And yeah, uh, they've had yeah. to pump off the track quite a few times and just trying to, you know, when you're in, it's like when all that dirt, everything around you is like induated in dirt and, and sorry, all the dirt and sharp and aggregate around you is like induated in water. That takes so long for that to dry out, and any little shower just enhances it, right? But uh, he got the job. He got the track done. Uh, I saw a picture first from Elliot Boots. I was, I was like, ah, I didn't really even sure Elliot Boots was good. I was shocked to see him go. I'm glad he went. Uh, 
And yeah, man, I just, uh, there we go. Max is on it. Let's bring up a picture of the track. I, I think that I, I swear he's going out bigger. I think he's going out a little bit. It, it feels like this track is bigger than last year. Is that we did? Yeah. It, it feels it's hard to say. It's hard to say because last year it was big too, but definitely bigger than, you know, pre 2020. One pre twenty twenty. So in twenty twenty two, he already had a decent size track, but this this is like no. one of the biggest he's had here. Right. So in twenty twenty, he couldn't use this. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So, so he, he went use, bigger. In, yeah, he had to use which would have been like over this section, where this yeah, where, if, uh, where that great container to the very right of this photo, where that yeah. great they had to put it there. Um, twenty twenty one. He was at Thunder Alley. So 2022, so it's been 2020. This is the third time that we had this layout on this track. Yeah, this large, large yeah. track. And I think, you know, yeah, it's... But yeah. I'd say, even though it's the third time, I think he's gone bigger every year. <laughs> so yeah, I, I, it looks bigger. I think so yeah. far, looking at this, this is, you know, it looks beautiful. I mean, I, I have to give Joey his credit. He built some great tracks. Uh, I'm looking, yeah. I think we have a five-packer. I'm assuming we're yeah. going uh, clockwise up, down, ar- ar- you know, around that 180. That five pack is going to be interesting out there. Are people going to be able to double, triple, or a triple, double, and a yeah. triple, a double to another like double going out the back? Then you cover yeah, like I a think- little hump. Man, I tell you what, this section coming down here looks like it's going to be gnarly too. Yeah, I think what I'm really happy about this year's track is the fact that he's kind of avoided those really big triples because mm. we all know that those jump faces get really hurt uh, at this event. Uh, you know, past years we've seen, I think it was 2022 when people crashed here, like here in the front, there was this huge mm-hmm. triple, triple, and everyone kept crashing on that. But this year he's done this on the left-hand side. There's this, I think it's a six-pack. I don't know if you can do triple. Yeah, triple. I just looked back too. I just saw it. I just yeah. saw that other that first trip jump right there. Yeah, but I think I think it's gonna be two, 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 mm-hmm. and then everything else is a double, which looks relatively easy to do. Uh, this one in the front where you jump into the ball, um, I think that's probably the biggest jump on the track. But I think you have enough run, like run to that jump, so you, it's it should be decent to make even if the jump face gets a little bit of but i really like the fact that you know there's a lot of corners where you can actually like battle cars oh yeah i love this little section so after that big jump you talk about you go out the back section then you come into like this very tight s section that's going to be a slow section for guys for overtaking then they come down into another board and back up yeah i i have to give so i heard he uh not i mean he obviously designed the track but i think he had um, Westergaard and another guy who does motocross racing tracks, Daniel Smith, I think he said his name was, help him come in and do some work on her. So, uh, it's good, you know, good to see. I think the track is is good. I I I am, I'm upset we haven't seen any cars running on it since we, since we before we got started. I'm like, I'm like, while we're doing this, I'm gonna be looking on on uh. On uh, yeah, if we can, yeah, Facebook, if we can find any video, but I think it looks great. Uh, I think what's happened is he's now been here for some time, so he knows what works with this track and what type of he's, yeah. So now he can figure out what works, you know, he needs this track that you know, a lot of guys use this track when it's not wet, so now he knows what can what works, what, what he can get away with, uh, and what provides. A, a good challenging track so i think for the 25th anniversary of this race i think it's it's a fucking awesome track well done to everybody involved good job yeah yeah and one thing to mention also is that i think fear form was as far as i know a permanent track but since they moved to paris he kind of purpose built the tracks for the event uh, but i think this is the same place where the regular track is uh, mm-hmm. You know, they have JBR routes there. They have it the track open for track days. So especially with dirt, 
it it does take some time to you know like hone in uh, when mm-hmm. you drive it drive on it with cars you kind of get the rubber in there you get uh, the rocks off so and it, it gets better through the time and i think that's also going to be better because on top of the fact that it's you know probably not going to rain as much uh, as it did before because i think every year since i think 2020 2022 2023 every year well 2023 rained a lot but <laughs> 2022 and 2020 we had you know rain in practice and qualifying and people ran with the track like really like wet and muddy so when you do that it always gets really blown out it it, it you can't do anything about it but i think this year if, if we get lucky we don't get heavy rain and that's going to help the track stay together really well as well because they can control the moisture on it and you know yeah so well, I'm, I'm looking at i'm yeah. looking at my my from her from my weather thing and it has uh today two percent zero percent tomorrow two percent friday 55 percent saturday now that can change um yeah but it's still not as bad as last year because it was like a meter of <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's it's depends it could be this is also it's not it could be raining over there and it's not raining her yeah, so yeah. we won't we, we can't make any real predictions off of that i would say um first big international race for one eight scale this is you know this race attracts people from around the world entries capped at eight at uh, 800 this year so he's capped the race capped the entries um rightfully so i mean he's been doing this tr- race since you know 2025 uh well, he's been here for 25 years but the europeans uh have kind of come out in style come out in style to come out and race uh, some European like uh, what's his name, Parente. I wasn't expecting Daniel Parente to go here, yeah. but I see Daniel's there with the techno team, uh, with uh, Yao Figueredo. Obviously, we have Elliot Boots, um, JC3, Barufalo. Is there Rana Falk? Is there obviously, and I I don't know who else is there that might be of you know European. Well, st- uh, Berton and Figueredo are Berton, I said Figueredo. Yeah. The ki- yeah. the Kilix need to come to this race. Yeah, I think with the Kilix, it's kind of really difficult for them because they can't practice during the winter, so they'd have to, you know. But they need to do the. the they need. To, well, I don't yeah. think I don't think Barkan can come right now because of yeah. school. I think I, I think Burak Burak could come because he could yeah. take time off. Uh, well, he doesn't have school anymore, so he could just come and practice for a few weeks and then. He could have come and did the oh, really? last weekend. I mean, he does have a job, but I think, yeah. I think RC is his job now. He could have done the, uh, you know, like the weekend, fr- get there on a Thursday, f- go yeah. or Friday, go do a weekend race and all that stuff. Because that's all a part of DNC as well, right? The weekend yeah. prior yeah. to this. Uh, Rev- so I was listening. Chase said that uh, we saw JC3. He went out to Palm Desert to like break in engines and just have a chilled out uh, day. Thunder Alley was packed, like every because everybody wants to go Thunder Alley, right? Yeah, because they see it like, and that's what you know. That's like you go Thunder Alley because that's where you're gonna see. It's like, what can I? It's like, oh man, when you go Thunder Alley before DNC, it's like, it's like uh, going to like everybody's trying to put their best foot forward. You know what I mean? Everybody's trying to not show any type of weakness out there. They're trying to go out there. They're trying to be good. I mean, you, you, I, I think when I picked you up, you like, we, we, we'll talk about that. It took us five hours to get there. But, um, uh, and like, you don't want to show no chink in your armor. Like, it's like yeah. everybody deserves their chest out. You gotta be on, you know, you gotta be kind of like on point all the time because everybody's watching you. You know, when you go out there, everybody's watching you. But it's such a, great feeling right everybody's there you want to be there the ending is you, it's so many people that you don't get that much track time so if you want to get track time uh and then i'm, I'm pretty sure revelation gets packed uh but probably found alley was the big place they went to so um that's all part of doing the dnc experience too that's why i always tell people go out there the weekend before to get the full experience you know to go try out some different tracks you can go to a different track rather barren you can go to a different track friday different track saturday and then Sunday, because all the tracks are kind of open this weekend. It's like, uh, it's like honestly, it's it's this race. I was trying to, I was thinking about this this morning. Um, 
to put it in like if you was to rank races and for me the world is always going to be uh the the number one any world championships is number one race uh i think i still think that euros and the euros and the nationals are very prestigious as well but my man you've been a like a dnc that's a serious uh that is i, I would rank dnc maybe like that race like that race right after this or maybe higher some of these guys might race rank rank them higher I remember Ronda Fox said I could I might rank a I might rank a DNC higher than a Euros. Yeah, DNC is kind of tough because for someone like Ongaro, clearly DNC doesn't mean much because he yeah. isn't going going anymore. I think he didn't go last year and he isn't going this year. I think he's over I, DNC. I think you know I think he tried it, said I'm better without it, and just it's not. Well, I, I think also if they don't have it comes down to performance there as well. If you don't, yeah. it's just, no, uh, I think that's another thing. It's a long race. It's cool. Cold. It's out doors. It's on the lights, all that type of stuff. And I think that's where that, what hurts a lot of the Europeans, right. That aren't used to that being on the lights, the cold, the track size, uh, the format, all that type of stuff. So I think, yeah, I think the biggest is the fact that every time you go out there, the track is so different. Different, and like you have to take break from cars. So you know, when you go there on on Friday, you're doing nitro buggy qualifying, and then on Saturday, all you do is e buggy and choggy, and then on Sunday, you have like a ten minute practice during the day when the track is completely different, and then you go again under the lights everything's so stiff you have to go softer on your shock oils you have to change a lot in the car you know uh and and so, and, and you yeah. guys in europe are not used to running under lights that's true i i don't necessarily think that under light is the big thing it's just uh especially in phoenix the big thing was how cold it actually got because during the day it was like 20 degrees celsius and during the night it goes almost to zero so it's like such a big difference during the race. Because in Europe, uh, sometimes we go under lights, but it's the same temperature. The temperature mm -hmm. doesn't change. So it's not that big of a difference. But here it's just, yeah, you get so little track time. You don't get to, you know, get comfortable. You kind of just have to trust what you have. So I think it's one of those races that, for example, Ron Falk, he knows how to run mm -hmm. on this type mm -hmm. of grip. Mm -hmm. But for Ongaro, he's never been good on this American style, you know, off road style tracks. He's more good on those European high speed, higher grip tracks. So I think for him, he doesn't have the natural, you know, comfortable feeling here. So when, when he has to take a day break from Nitro Buggy and then go to the main, it's, it's really, really difficult. It's really difficult. Yep, absolutely. And, um, I guess, well, the big guy here is Mayfield, man. Mayfield has won a plethora of these races. And um, can he make it uh, three Nitro buggy wins in a row this year? Or will somebody he, stop him? He has already three. So he, oh, he, he has three. Four. Yeah, he can make it four. four. Okay. Win streak of three. Sorry, I read that wrong. Yeah. Uh, man, that's impressive. To win this race. I mean, last year he would tell you after when he came off the stand and I talked to him and interviewed him, he's like, Man, that race, that was hard race. Because it was not yeah. he could not relax. Uh, I mean, it's very hard to count Mayfield out at this race, right? Yeah. And I feel if it's gonna but it's gonna be out in that outdoor track this year, and He's, he's it's gonna be it's gonna be a big a, a, a bit different. Uh, I mean, mind you, there's been he he was her. I think was he here? He was he not here for the TNR race? I can't remember. Um, I can't. He remember was that. actually. Yeah, he was. So, but Spencer Ripken ended up beating him, if I remember correctly. Yeah. So, but, but I mean, he's I mean, he's kind of locked and loaded in his eight scale car, and he's been you know they, they just did that big race at uh they did that the FTC race or. FTR race, sorry, at Tony's, which is another big track. Um, Mayfield's just ready to get out there, do some car racing, and drink some Coors Light at night, I think. And go from there. Yeah, I think this is his, like, safe space in terms of, you know, because 
the way he is as a driver, it's like he doesn't even give a shit about qualifying. He just goes there to do the final. It doesn't matter if he starts first, fifth, or last. He knows what he needs to do for the main. I think, in some sense, Mayfield could probably show up just for the main at these races. <laughs> you know, he'd get an automatic spot in the main and he'd be fine with it. Because I think this is where he feels the most comfortable. This is, you know, what what he drives on the most. This is, you know, what he's won on the most. Um, I think counting together, he has... Nine, I think. Yeah, I think nine or even ten. Yeah, it's very he hard has, to find stats on this stuff. I think he has ten Nitro Buggy wins because he has now... He won 2017, 2019. So he has seven now from the past couple of years. And then, uh, sorry, five from the past couple of years. And then he has in the past one. I think it's many? nine. What? Yeah, I think it's nine what he has. Nine. Yeah. But he also has a plethora of truck. I think he has other like truck wins. and. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think what what Mayfield would be want to like can he sweep? That's what he would want to do. He did that back in 2017. Uh I I, I shouldn't say can he sweep. He man, it'd be hard to sweep this again. But he could I mean if there's anybody that could do it, he could do it. I think he swept this multiple times actually. He swept it Probably. in 2021 and 2017, yeah. So, so he twice. twice, yeah. Two different tracks, too. Yeah, well, three if you count, you know, <laughs> the indoor track. Well, he didn't sweep in 2023. Oh, that's true. That's true. He didn't sweep in 2023. <laughs> and yeah, after last year's track being on that small track, it's good to be out here. They moved the dates. Uh, I don't think that hurt it. it. It probably hurt races around it because races had to mm-hmm. then plan around it. But uh, I mean, I think... They had to do something after last year's. The, last year's with the weather, and then well, not just last year, but every year that it's been there, there's, there's been weather, either leading up to the race, where it's not allowed them to build a track, or you know whatever. But I think they're ready. They're locked and loaded. From the pictures that I've seen, it's uh, it's it's like a festival. Like you go when you're sitting up on that driver's stand, and you look out there, and you see all the. You see all the, the canopies and the pit row set up. And then when that sun drops on over those mountains, it's a beautiful sight. Everybody's excited. I know, I know exactly. Yesterday, everyone was excited to setting up. Today, everybody's like ready to get on the track. People, ex- you know, people you haven't seen for like, oh, I haven't seen you for a long time, blah, blah, blah. Everybody, you know, it's like this whole world just exists. And if the weather's good, you get people coming to watch it. Like, I remember one Saturday or Sunday, it was so sunny. It was such a beautiful, I think it was 2022 that Saturday was a good day. And I just remember looking at it, it was so beautiful. And I was like, people that weren't racers were there, you know, and that was good to see. And I, I it, it's a great race. Uh, maybe next year it'd be on the books. It just wasn't on the books for me this year. And uh, we'll see, but it's I, I I do enjoy. I'm gonna enjoy spectating. I always spectate, but uh, not being there and spectating from live RC who doing the coverage. I expect they will do a great job uh, as well. And I, I'm excited, man. I'm excited to to get things cracking at this race. I, it's it's DNC. Like I I cannot help to get it. It's like a world. It's like nationals. These these races that get me excited are DNC. Worlds, Nationals, Euros. Not like overexcited, mainly because at DNC, DNC, I think, has the most amount of international competitors that we see at a race besides yeah, a world championship. Yeah. Besides a world championship. Yeah. And I bet you Silver State will have a few too. And obviously, we saw people come to AMS. And um, hopefully, we can get some more people coming over to the East Coast as well, some more Europeans as well. But when it comes to Europeans coming to America, they come to to DNA, DNC, and they, I think they're going to start coming to Silver State a little bit more. So yeah. we shall see. Even though they 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 came last year. Um, all right, Max. So anything you want to say before we move on? No, I think I think we're good. All right. Up next, we said we're going to go for a blast from the past. 
and take a look at some of the past DNCs because this is the 25th anniversary of this this race. Jay Smoker will say, I've been to every single one of these now. So uh, he has attended all 25. Uh, but with that blast from the past, we're going to say thank you to Corsa Tech USA for their support. The Corsa Tech USA is your one stop for all things Corsa Tech in the USA. You can now purchase all your Corsa Tech range of products in nitro and electric powered systems and accessories used by European and world champions David Ranafalk and Robert Battier. Established in 2022, Corsa Tech was founded by Adrian Bartin and Oscar Jensen. Made by racers for racers. All available in the USA. You can find out the link for Corsa Tech USA in the written description below. Let them know you heard about it on the No Name RC podcast, please, in the notes when you buy, and it will help us out a lot. So, all right, Max, Max, is, me, Max, I, you, you was struggling to find results and information about this race. Man, where is Neo Buggy when you need it? Because Neo yeah. Buggy would have had all this shit. Yeah, this was like, I was, we, we talked about how, doing this D- DNC podcast, and I was like, yeah, it's a great idea to talk about the past. Without this Mike Garrison's list from Live RC, huge shout out to him for doing this back in 2019. Without this Just list, the podcast, by the way. RC, yeah. it's called. Okay, yeah, but without this, there would have been very <laughs> little to go with. I tried to look for pics of the tracks, and I couldn't find anything, you know, older than 2023. So I kind of gave up on that. But yeah, I think yeah, we'll start start with this, which is the you know, because for us, for me and Keenan, the first DNC we went to was 2018. So mm-hmm. before that, we don't really have that much experience. But of this I, I want to let's go through some of the winners here because I've yeah, been following sure. this race since a long. I remember looking at videos when this race was at Hammett. When I was yeah. geeking out on RC in, in uh, the ni- 1999, um, I think, when did I go to California? From 1990, I, I went to California in 2005, and we went to Hammett. I went up there in like March, Easter-ish. I went up there, and then um, so we was going to Silver State. Was it March? Was it April? I can't remember. Uh, it's been a long time. This is 2005. You probably was you born? I was born in 2000, so I'm as old as uh, DNC. Okay, so I Actually, was DNC there. might be a little bit older because I was born at the end of the year. So. Okay, I, I I got to go to like the Hemet track that this was started at, and I've driven on that track and how small it was. So I can tell you how small that track was, but it, this is where it all started in 2000. Richard Saxon. Taking it in, we see Chad Bradley. Richard Saxon won it twice. Jeremy, I heard Jeremy Quartz is coming out of retirement and to race there this weekend. Uh, that yeah, was 2003. Two thousand three, two thousand four. Ryan Cavallari, wow, but Cavallari won this a long time ago. Two thousand five, yeah. we saw Jared Tebow take his first of his win. Two thousand six, Taylor James. This dude was fast, fast driving that jamming. Mike True, you know eight. Kevin, no, sorry, Mike Tree in 07, Kev in 08, Mayfield 09, Kev again oh, in 2010. Uh, the first one in Arizona in the Nitro Pit was 2007. So so yeah. that's when they made the move from Hammett to Nitro Pit was uh, 2007? Yeah. All right. Uh, then, right, so that makes sense. True is from Arizona. Ryan Cavallari, Ryan Mayfield. When did they move to the other place Uh, in arizona yeah so in 2011 they moved to fear farm where it was held up until 2018 all right so 2011 we saw jared tiva win his second one uh ty testman had been in his first one in 2012 then ryan mayfield in 2013 ty testman his second one in 2014 2015 we saw ryan mayfield uh, take a win. Ryan Cavallari will win his last one in 2016 so far, and Ryan Mayfield 2017. And then we see when it switches over to well, Fair Farm this year, because it was 2018 when we went, we see the first European to take a win here, David Ronafalk. And we was there for that, actually. So yeah. that leads us up to that one. Um, I remember reading about this ma- this this race in a magazine and stuff like that. Uh and you know, just always wanting to go to this race. 
So when the opportunity, like, you know, this is like a race that I always wanted to go, but I never thought I'd be able to go. A couple of Bermudians like had been. And then when the opportunity to come up in 2018, I had just been like, you know, I had been doing JQ manager for about seven months. I was so excited about going to this race. Uh, we went out there. Oh man, I, I'll never forget my first DNC. It was so awesome. <laughs> like I it it's I'll tell you what sucked. The living arrangements. <laughs> yeah. We was like, how many was there? I think it was five people in that that tiny camp. camp. Yeah. Tony yeah. sleeping on the floor on the air mattress. Mike sleeping on the uh on the the table that drops down to a so it's like a bed. You and Giannis, like 17, sleeping in a big bed together. And I slept in a small recliner. And then one day, I'll never forget, you guys just, oh, it's so cold. And you little, you were like so small <laughs> and short. And you put that bloody, uh, the heat on to like 90 degrees. Yeah. <laughs> Man, we woke up in the middle of the night sweating. Like, what is going on here? Sweating. <laughs> oh, man, we didn't have no water. Had to go like, you know, go get baths at truck stops. That's when I learned that truck stops have baths. You know, you get showers and stuff like that. Uh, but I would I would never forget, like, I'm just walking around. Um, I remember we had so many JQ people there. It was, yeah, I think we was probably, like, realistically one of the biggest teams. Because we had, like, five or six tents full of people. Yeah, we had that big tent set up, and like I think yeah. even the, everybody, the, everyone was like, "What the hell happened there?" Like we had so many JQ cars, and then also that was the year that we saw people like Figueredo, ba- Badier exactly. was there, Badier was there, Barufalo. So nobody knew who Figueredo and Barufalo were, and they were fast. They were yeah. fast. I think that was kind of the European breakthrough year. Yeah. Not only because David won Nitro Buggy the first time, David had won Truggy actually before that. 2015, um, I think. Yeah, yeah. So there had been a few Europeans like Boots and David B competitive before that. But the big ba- breakthrough was that I think um, Barufalo and Figueredo qualified third and fourth. Yeah. And Robert, Robert qualified in the main. Um, then obviously David Boots was there. People were I not think, happy about Barufalo and Figueroa. Oh yeah, know. that I remember. I remember the gyro the, talks. Yeah, that's. I think that that's when the gyro talk started for Americans. Because before that, I never heard Americans talk about gyros and and stuff like that. But since then, it had been nonstop about the European. Well, it, had been, it had been in the air. It had been in the air since about 2016. When the worlds were there, yeah, about Ongaro, and then yeah, but, uh, yeah. and then Ongaro it, won in Ongaro won in twenty eighteen. I remember that when True he was there looking at his car, and they if marted the whole gyro. Right, but I'm talking about when he was in America. It started yeah. there. It yeah. started there, and then as then of course, like nobody knows who Barufalo. I didn't. Know, I didn't know who the hell Barufalo was yeah. or Figueredo. Like and um, man, peep the people were not happy. People were not happy because they were doing about like they got gyros and the, you know that that's and I was just like no they're just fast yeah and uh, then I think uh, Robert almost won that too he came from way behind to win that uh, I'm sorry he he became, didn't he finish second yeah so it was actually because David led for most of the main and Tessman was kind of second mm-hmm. and then. At the last 10 minutes, like Robert passed Tessman and Catch Ronefog by like almost 10 seconds. And in the last corner, they finished just like behind each other. It was like David also clipped the pipe in the last corner. So, yeah, Robert, there was almost side by side going over the line, but that was an exciting finish. And that yeah. was also one of the most heart gut wrenching uh, DNCs as well because of JQ <laughs> and our, you know. Someone gave us like 2,000 of them damn stickers. <laughs> and at first it was a good idea. Like, you know, we're just going to stick a bomb. It was fun. You know, stick a bomb, the, stick a bomb, the driver's test, stick a bomb, the, a television, you know, that type of stuff. No. Then, of course, but JQ has to go tear the ass out of it. Oh, I'm going to stick a bomb, the actual champagne bottles. <laughs> Man, I'll never forget when I walked across that and saw that champagne bottle 
We have a JQ takeover. Hashtag JQ takeover. Stick on the Islands, man. Man, I we was almost going to war with the. That's when that's all when our beef with HB started too. That that's where it started. Yeah, that's when our beef with HB started. That's when the HB JQ beef started. Oh yeah, I remember, but I uh, I can't remember. I think it was because of uh, the radio. It was oh. no, it was because of well, it was because of Cole. It was it was. It started the big kerfuffle started between uh, Cole. Not between Cole, but it was. I, I I keep I I can laugh at it now, but it was between, uh oh man, Eddie Lorette Ed, uh, Eddie Lorette JQ. It started because it started. <laughs> I have to tell this story. I'm told it a lot of times on the podcast, but if you haven't heard it, I'm gonna say it real quick. Uh so what happened was, uh I think Figueredo like wrecked wrecked uh Co off that bridge and like broke his car or something, right? And he and it was like a B man. JQ bump. JQ was bumping up. JQ is bumping up to the A. JQ was actually fast that weekend too. He was very he was fast good. that he weekend. Was he was yeah. very fast. He would have. He probably would have made a nitro main. I think um, he made the main in E buggy. He did. He did. He bumped yeah. up. The, he bumped up from the B to the A. I think this is like. Yeah. I remember because I went grabbed his car. I put it in. I put his car in tech, and. Excuse me, you guys have to excuse me. As we're walking, as well, I think I can't remember what happened, but I just know that um Eddie Lorette and Pico were effing off Figueredo and his dad, and his dad just in between them. And Figueredo is small, small, like he's a little chunky back then. Uh, and they're like, they're like, I know Figueredo is a man don't understand because he doesn't speak English. And then I'm like, and G and JQ goes, Hey Eddie, it must have been the 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 gyro, and that just switched all the that and then I I swear to God I said this guy is gonna knock JQ out with a car and then um probably needed to get knocked out with a car uh but then it just started then you, then all the HB guys came to our tent and then it was like well it was like big curve it was like gang RC gang wars up in there yeah but then the all the HB guys went running back to their tents with tails right and that's when Ben panic that's when Ben huh. <laughs> uh, because I think I was um, Lorenzo, and um, I can't remember who the other one was, but he, he Lorenzo and someone was pitting like next to us, and uh, the the HP gang was there, and then Lorenzo showed up, and then all the HP drivers just <laughs> ran back to their pits. <laughs> I was I I'm not gonna lie, I was out there in in them trenches. <laughs> that was some. That was like all out, man. 2018 was like. We didn't give two fucks. Yeah. Like we didn't give two fucks about anything. Like we were like 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 we're her, we're having fun. We we had fun. It was like people was like you was doing fun. well, JQ was doing well, Dagani was doing well. Like you was that's the other thing. You was out there kicking people were mad at you. That's right. Yeah. This guy right here is a DNC intermediate winner. He was and a DNC intermediate is very hard. Expert. Yeah. People were mad yeah. at you. You're like this little short guy. She was so short. I mean, you're short, but you're shorter. Yeah, your little baby yeah, fat I, and your hoodie. And that was actually that was actually a big year because everyone was running expert. That it was Ryan Pavidis, Camden Lime, uh, Dylan Nelson. All these guys who are there right now running pro. That they was like that was the last year in intermediate, I think. So. Our expert. Uh, so yeah, that was like, yeah, I don't know if maybe because yeah, I re- I can't remember if they did expert the second uh, the year after that, but that yeah, everyone was there like from from that group of drivers. Yeah, I was. Uh, and then after J- JQ got DQ'd, I'll never forget. I f- I was like in the pits, and Joe was like, "That's it. I told you, don't do it." And then I heard you turn the radio off. Like heard you turn Ben Sterling's radio off. So by the way, if you haven't heard that story, basically JQ turned off Ben Sterling's radio and JQ was was lead was 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 lapping him in a bump spot in Truggy and told him, "I'm lapping you. Let me come by." And then Ben Sterling just demolished him and broke his uh his body post on the AE truck. He's running an AE truck, so it started alligating and like that. And JQ was. Like he would have made it to the A, and then 
Yeah. When is when he just realized that he couldn't make it, he just looked over at Ben Sterling's radio and boop. Oh man. Boop. And like it, his car didn't go out of control. He just realized he didn't have control and turned it on. But uh oh man, that kind of all compiled. And then I just remember JQ there gluing up tires and they're gone again. You're DQ'd. Why are you gluing up tires? He got DQ'd on the Sunday. Yeah, so he couldn't run he like qualified. his B main. He qualified uh, 22nd. So. All right, so you would have been in the B main. Yeah, B main. Oh, man. And then you went out there. And uh, you went out there. I'll never forget. I was sitting in the trailer. I was so angry. I think I didn't watch the Truggy final. And I went out there for your intermediate final. I was sitting in the hay drinking a Modelo, trying to stay warm. And just watching you race. And I remember Nitro Bug, I was so nervous watching you. And you went out there and you won it, man. You drove well. You drove, you drove really well. Like I think I think all of that was a big surprise for the Americans, right? You doing well in intermediate, yeah. all them guys doing well. And that was like the first time in a very long time we saw a big group of Europeans come over and start doing well in America. And of course, that started me talking about Europe versus USA. And yeah. we have it again going this year, Europe versus USA, 2020. 2024. Yeah. Actually, okay. I wanted to I wanted to do something before we we went okay. on. Um so <laughs> let me see. Uh I'm going to put this up on screen. Anything else you remember fondly of Um they had really damn good curly fries there. I remember that. I appreciate oh, those things. Yeah, when it, like it, remember that one day, it, I mean, it was cold and so windy there one day, but I mean, I just remember my, I got my first time I got wind burn was there. Really? Yeah. So it was uh, like my face was all wind burn. I was like, what is this? But man, the big giant turkey legs they had and oh, it was some, that food was good, but man, it was, that was rough, man. No, no real toilet. Well, I mean, that porta pot is there. But like doing the camp life there, I swear on I look, but I just got back into camp life, camp life with Lance because he's got a big, big camper. But that little camper turned me right off of uh camp life whatsoever. All right, so we up we up here with the 2018 DNC. Uh, I'm gonna go back a little bit. A little bit of heavy volume. Good. Um, I. Racing red. All right, so we're gonna do Max's intro and <laughs> qualifier from Kirkunimi, Finland, with the JQ Racing Black Edition, sponsored by JQ Racing Reds, J Concepts, LRP, Savak, Sidewinder, Gia, and Mug Graphics. Special thanks to. His man Lefty, my mom and dad, and to the most important, the man above, and that's apparently JQ. <laughs> Car number one, Max Mortz. <laughs> hey, when you said that, I just sat on that damn hay bale and went, oh my gosh. All right, uh, I'm just going to uh, so if you guys want to see that, you can go 20, 2018 DNC. Uh, I'm gonna. I just want to get some of the action in here, so I'm gonna fast forward a little bit. I have to say, I probably made like I'm. I have to say, like, okay, I'm pretty good at making passes. I feel, and I think I have some really nice ones on video from the past. But this one is probably the nicest pass I've ever made, like right in the video. Maybe not the nicest, but one of the nicest at least. So I don't know what. I think it's around ten minutes or something. But I don't know if you want to rewind to that. But I want to go to the start. I so, because I remember yeah. also, I remember, you know what I remember about this year is that a guy went to turn Marshall, a car who was sitting on the on the bank there on the hay bales, and his phone fell. And as his phone fell, a car was coming straight away and hit it like <laughs> as it was falling, it hit it like mid air and shattered his car into pieces, his phone into pieces. <laughs> I'll never forget that. I'll never forget that. I'm about to start this race. But yeah, man, it was a great race. You, I remember another incident was like, because I mean, that six-pack coming through her, you'll see it once they started. That six-pack, it was deadly because cars were crashing in the middle. You Turn marshals couldn't get there because I was so crazy to turn marshal, right? And I remember a car flipped in the middle, and I saw it, 
And then Mike, because Mike and I were talking about this, Mike Hill and I, and he goes, I remember just Josie. There you go. There you start, Maxie. <laughs> there you go. And yeah, Henry Mort pe- special painted car. Yeah, my dad painted that one. I know. I remember. This track was good. That yeah, six track, track was, was probably the, yeah. yeah, yeah. I love this track. This was like probably one of the best tracks I've raced on. Great. You was able to just go through there and it's like flickety flick, flickety flick. I watched you. So Carl was like right in the middle of that crash, and Joseph ran up and said, luck, stuck, luck, stuck, stuck, stuck. <laughs> real quick, like, and you was able to adjust in, in mid air and uh, go on at uh, avoid because if you would have hit that car, you would have shared the front right off that car. Absolutely. Yeah. This was like a probably, I, I, I crashed in the beginning somewhere because I was leading in the beginning, then I did something silly and I dropped back a bit. But since then, I think I ended up winning by half a lap at least. And you uh, was also okay. fast in electric. Did you not? You you came like you TQ. You you um, started second in electric, right? Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think Pavidis TQ electric, and I was second. And then I my ESC broke in the main. I don't know why, but it just yeah. yeah but you was in the lead when you broke. Oh, you was doing. He was in the. In the pack, I remember. Yeah, yeah. Um, but this, hey man, at this time, some of these guys in this in this race, like in this intermediate man, were fast. Like Dylan Nelson, oh yeah, Schumacher was good. Um, Brian Givens, Bogey was in there. His birthday coming up too. Brian Pavitas, Vinkelmato, Drake, they were all. Casey Peck was fast. Uh, I was. It was a. It was a good. Uh, you, Max is there reliving his glory. Yeah, I, this was a nice one. I I absolutely loved driving on this track. And I'm sitting like right here in this corner watching you swaying back yeah. and forth. Still yeah. mad at JQ. Good event. Uh David goes on to win that. I remember we were all celebrate. We we like we we he I said, What you gonna do to uh celebrate winning? He goes, I'm gonna have a pazuki at uh this restaurant that we all kind of saw him later on. And um that thus started my whole DNC experience. Then we had to pack all that shit up, drive back to California. And then that was when I came up with the brilliant idea to drive the van to the East Coast. So that was actually a, a very, a, my first USA real USA road trip. I spent like a week at Smokers with JQ, went up to see my dad, all this type of stuff. And um, when I came back, I went up to see my dad, my family. And when I came back, JQ was flying out. And then I drove the van. First time, I'm my second time driving in America. No, third time, because. I, let's just say I could not drive. I did not know what I was doing. Like, and I drove that bloody van across the states. Jake was like, "Do not mess your up. Do not crash my van." I said, "If I crash your van, I'm probably gonna die." Well, don't die. Here is one hundred and fifty dollars. Make it to Dallas. <laughs> Dallas is like a day's drive, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, so that then led to 2019. Obviously, due to that was the last race that we had at Fair Farm. Uh, due to I remember this. This is actually people liked JQ after this because some guy reported the driver stand. Some guy got pissed off of a glow plug or something. Re- went got all pissy. Went and reported like the driver stand, and they were not up to code and all this type of stuff, and end up getting that. I was getting that track shut down. Well, that might have happened that year. Actually, it it happened. I think it happened actually before this event because yeah. they had to build a new driver stand for this event, and they had done all kind of janky things mm-hmm. because it was so rushed to get it done, and they just couldn't get all the permits to be okay again, and all bureaucracy kind of fucked the beer farm truck over, and Joey had to. Yeah, move I remember that. He said it's not worth it. It just wasn't worth the trouble. To do it right, yeah. So then we go to 2019, which will be the move to where it is currently now in Paris, and that was also dramatic because of rain, right? So we're all excited to go to you know this was a new event, new new venue. Nobody really, I think they might have had tracks here before, if I'm not mistaken, but I remember everybody, nobody knew what's going to happen going into this. And then it rained so much that he couldn't build a track. So it's supposed to have, the, yeah. like you said, that's what we said. We had the track where it is now, and then they had the track on the side. 
And then he built that. Uh, I, and once again, he figured out a way to do it. So the track was still very long. It was like a square. It was like yeah. a square track and makeshift track. And man, I remember um, sitting up in the, uh, in the, what is it this year? Yes. I was sitting, I think we went, uh, I was, I was, I thought Viking was going to kill everybody there this year. He was, he was fast. He was yeah. super fast. And then um, I, I'm trying to find video of this right now. You didn't go. You didn't go. I think he was in school or something like that. Yeah, I haven't actually gone apart from since. 2018. Yeah. You haven't been since. So we, you know, we got, I think, and this is also when I knew like JQ's bid to do well at DNC was over. Like he was just not on pay. He was still had some pace, but wasn't that good. I think 2019, we didn't have you. Like we didn't really have many people there, but we still went. We had a big camp. We had fun. We didn't really have nobody in the in the game that could do anything. I think 2019 was the year that it was kind of rainy, miserable a little bit, but then it picked up uh, a little bit by by the time racing Saturday. I think Saturday we used to have an, it was like a rain stop, so nothing was going on. So people just started throwing a football around and people were having fun and you know while they were working on the track, and then they got it ready. And I remember I was um, JB came, I think. That's year JB came and we was having fun with him. Uh, and I just remember I was sitting up on a uh, container watching the race. And I was like, the start of the, the man, you know, like, I mean, Ronald was so fast the entire weekend. Like, he, I think he TQ'd, if I'm not mistaken. Do we have results? Um, let me check the qualifying. I, I believe actually Ongaro might have TQ'd, if I'm not really? wrong. Yeah, it was, this was the year where Ongaro did reach. Right, this really is his first well. year there. Yeah. So, so the first year Ongaro did really well. Let me see. Yeah, Ongaro TQ'd with Ronifog in second place. Um, so, yeah, actually, all it was interesting because this year Ongaro TQ'd round one, Barufalo round two, and Ronifog round three. This was the throat punch year. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, this was the throat punch here. No, exactly. no, 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 no. This is 2020. 2020. No. A throat punch is 2020? Yes, because I remember it was okay. on the big track. Because I remember okay, Ruffalo. Okay. Because Mayfield needed a good third qualifier. Yeah. To make it into the A. Um, yeah, Angaro TQ in. But uh, and he ended up, ended up with a third. Probably his, that's his best finish at uh, DNC, though. Yeah, yeah, I think I remember we follow this event and I was like, yeah, like Ongaro's got it in the bag. He looks so good. But then when the mains came around, the track got a lot worse and he just looked lost. He was just sliding around looking really bad, but he ended up salvaging a third place. And um, Ronifog most likely would have won it, but then he hit the generator. <laughs> this, this is well, the, he started uh, and he got out to a lead. Yeah. And um, I remember just freaking out. This is before the first pit stop. I'm up there. I told you guys. Like, I, I'm up there. Go, Viking. Go. Mike, everybody's there. I'm like, up on the container. And then when he hit that, I was just like, no. Yeah. Then he was out. Like, that was for the first pit stop. And then I think Mayfield just kind of walked away after that. If yeah, I remember correctly. Yeah. Yeah. Mayfield was kind of ahead of. Fendon Ongaro was battling for a while, but that was about it. Yeah, so uh, Ronafuck almost made a two in a row, but Mayfield stacks up another win, right? Yeah. So he's good. Uh, 2020, little did we know this would be COVID would strike. Uh, I think 2020 was the year that I didn't go out there for the weekend before, like my first time. I kind of drove up there. I kind of flew in on the... Um, I think I flew in. No, 2020. I didn't go 2021. 2020, 2020. I, I kind of flew in there the, the Tuesday and flew out on the Monday of the race, you know? So I came in. Uh, that was actually, uh, I think Mike Hill came into pit for like the Ghani and those guys, if I'm not mistaken, that year as well. And I think this year also, I just remember 
It was another year. Oh, this is the year that JQ was convinced that he was going to make the main, beat this person, do this, do that, do all of this. And then when I walked in on the Wednesday of practice from doing some errands, and I started looking at his face, he's like, I was like, oh, he's done. All confidence gone. All confidence gone. Done. Shot. All gone. Um, and that race there, uh, Ranafout came over on his uh, last term of high tech. Was it 2020? Yeah, because 2021 he didn't come. Yeah. Yeah. So 2020, Ranafout comes over, and we're going to bring up. Van Dalen was so fast that we can't do. So this is also yeah. the first year we got on this big track, right? Yeah. So we got on the big track. Uh, we're gonna put up the Amy and her bought by bought to you by Live RC here in a minute. Let me just bring it up. So it's a lot of you know Van Dalen TQ. Um, let's bring it there. There's Joey and Aaron. So it's like Van Dalen TQ. Baruffalo was second. This is the year. So this is the throat puncher. Tasman in in third. Rana Falk fourth. Ongaro still in fifth. Top five. Ongaro. Fenn, Drake Mayfield on in eighth. Cavalari, Tebow, Rifkin, Boots, Ogden, Figueredo. Figueredo? I didn't realize Figueredo made it that year either. I yeah, Figueredo. I think Figueredo yeah. has been in the main every year since 2018, if I'm not wrong, which is quite impressive, to be honest. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's been in the main every year. All right. Then. Well, let's just have a little quick look at this track as they get cracking. Uh, different side of start. You can see this. this looks... This track's a little bit smaller than what they were doing. That were what we was looking at. But yeah, Seth and Dalen. So this is the race that <laughs> that uh, Mayfield threatened to throat punch Baruffalo because Mayfield, I think he had a DNF in one of his qualifiers, if I'm not mistaken, or just had a bad qualifier. And he really needed that third qualifier to... Wow, these guys are driving. Heck, that's, that's Tasman way off a line like that. So he really needed a... a a good third qualifier to make this make the final. And Baruffalo was just behind him, like, whoa, you know how Baruffalo is like, whoa, yeah. driving full tilt and just like trying to get by him and trying to push him. And I think it just made him nervous. And he's and just like, dude, just let me let me race. Like, and um, I now forget. I think that's uh wow, Figueredo got out front. Yeah, this was this track was probably the most blown out we've had uh, at this event. It was crazy, really crazy. Well, wow, there's Baruffalo, there's Fan. I'm sorry, I'm just looking back on some of these. You guys can go find all of these in live RC, like this 2019 A final. Where was I, I for this race? 2020 A final. I was up in the corner, I believe, uh, watching this race. I might have been sitting off somewhere. No, I was sitting with Mike Hill watching this race, I think. He was watching it. Tasman up there, but I think uh, it ended up just being Rana Falk taking the win again, going to uh, getting that win that he probably could have had the year before, you know? Yeah, yeah. Rana Falk, yeah, Rana Falk ended up winning with actually interesting parties. Tebow finished second this year, and mm. then Mayfield in third. It, it was the, I, I don't know, really why Van Dalen was so poor in the main, but he was looking really strong in qualifying. And then in the main, it was just Tebow and Mayfield came through with Fend in fourth and Ongaro finishing still in the top five. But this is kind of 2020, 2021, um, even 2019 to some extent. This was like Ty Tessman's, you know, weak years mm -hmm. uh, of a DNC because in 2021, he didn't even make the main. Yeah, he did it. Man, this you can see the difference in how the track is now to what it is like before. All right, so Ranafog goes out and takes the win here, dude. And they also won uh e buggy. So Yeah, yeah. Ranafog won e buggy with Mayfield second and Tebow. So same podium in both both buggy classes. And in Truggy, actually, Ongaro had his best result. He finished third in Truggy with Fend second and Mayfield uh winning Truggy. <laughs> Yeah, and unfortunately, this will be the last time we see Ongaro up to date at a DNC because he did not come back. Uh, he he uh, went in 2022. 
Did he go in 2022? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he was really poor. That's why well, he didn't go in 2022. I th- he went. He went. Trust I don't me. remember. He he was so far. I think he started in. Um, he did. He, he did. Started, he, did. he started in fourth, but he finished in ninth. I forget things so much, Max. Yeah. I f- I probably talked to the man right there at the race, and I forgot that I, I did. I mean, it's starting. Everything's starting to come together. I've been to so many of them. Uh yeah. 2021. So then after that, we had COVID hit. Like I remember, like two weeks after DNC, COVID hit. Like, yeah, it was. Really I was like. Right after. I was like, oh, wow, that's crazy. Uh, and then 2021, early February, I think it was, uh, nobody traveled. It was kind of like just the American DNC because none of the Europeans could come over there. And, um, well, it was just obviously because of the, of, of you know, we they, there was travel restrictions. I don't think they could have had it at Paris too. So it was, everything was still up in the air. Like we had, it just started, it was like first 2021, Things have just started to open back up again for people. There are lots of still lots of rules and regulations for COVID and all that type of stuff. So we ended up, uh, I didn't go, I couldn't travel, but I ended up being at Thunder Alley. And that was a lot of yeah. people to pack into Thunder Alley because Thunder Alley isn't that big. It looks big, but it's not that big at uh, as you think it is. Yeah. Yeah, I think this was the year where we did really, you know, detailed following mm-hmm. online you know yes we did that's all we could do so we did really live streams like every day and i remember this so vividly because we was like there's no way fend loses this because in qualifying i think if i'm not wrong he tq'd every single class uh let, let me actually check that but at least nitro buggy he tq'd um he tq'd uh troggy and uh let me check E buggy. Yeah, he, he TQ'd every class and he TQ'd every round of Nitro buggy, all but one round of Chuggy and every round of E buggy. So he was like absolutely dominating. And I remember this because you was like a big, big fan fanboy at this time. And you were saying he's going to win, he's going to win. And I didn't pick him for um, E buggy, I think, uh, which he didn't win. Um, and then I didn't pick him for Chuggy, I think. But I did pick him for Nitro Buggy because he was so far ahead. So, so far ahead. He just kept making mistakes. And then he ended up flaming out at the, the top on the back backside. I think he ended up running out of fuel. But that was the year Fen should have really won and dominated all of the classes. But just He's never him. won uh, a DNC, I don't think yet. Not, not buggy, buggy. Anyway. yeah. He's yeah. won, I believe he's won Chuggy at least once. He won last year, uh, Chuggy, but uh, sorry, E Buggy, he won last year, but I don't know. That might be his only win from DNC. There, we have a look at Thunder Alley. If you've never been to Thunder Alley, you can see. Ah, man, that's that's probably one of the when you're sitting off waiting for that Nitro Buggy main or you know, whatever main, and if you look around. And it is absolutely packed around the, the driver's, st- you know, around the track. Everybody trying to get a little bit of real estate. And so you can see Thunder is a lot smaller. So it looks a little more condensed. But uh, yeah, man, I remember this damn bridge. I remember a guy got smacked in his head off. The, I hate uh, this bridge. Yeah, but uh, was- Tanner Denny was fast that year too. Cole Ogden, Cole, this Cole Ogden and this, this track is uh, like made for each other. Yeah, I don't know what it is, but Cole hasn't done that well since. Well, he did okay last year, but before uh, and then in 2022, he didn't do that crazy good. But at Thunder Rally, anytime there's a race, he does well. <laughs> yeah, he's at um man. I I think it's I think it's Thunder Alley and HP cars because at yeah. the at the RCGP there, man, all those HP cars are so fast. So yeah. fast. Oh, wow. This was, uh, I remember, this was very entertaining to watch. I watched this. Yeah. The, I think I spent the entire weekend just in my house watching this. Yeah. Yeah, I remember the infamous Drake uh, track cut. Ooh, I don't remember that. 
I, I can't I, remember where he did it, but we I remember Joseph was on the podcast on the live and then we were scrolling <laughs> through the video and looking how it a track cut. I, I, I have to go back Joseph and Bird. read after well was we doing video by then? Yeah, we yeah, was. Yeah, we, we did a live. We did a Facebook yeah, live, yeah. I think. Okay. Yeah. But this I was like yeah, this was a great year. Um yeah, in the buggy main, Fend and Mayfield just battled all throughout the first part of the main. Fend ended up flaming out. And then Ogden finished second, and yeah, Danny in third in Nitro Buggy. That was that was crazy because that year we kind of he kind of was on the brink of becoming a pro, mm-hmm. moved to S Works, and now he's totally gone from RC. Yeah, I think he also got like a real job too. Yeah, yeah. Where's the yeah, start? In, yeah, this was the first or oh, second of the Mayfield sweeps as he sweeped uh, in 2017 and in 2021. Well, this was also our first big race back from COVID, too. So yeah, it was a really yeah, big deal yeah. for... Not, I mean, you know, like in Europe, you guys were still locked on. You guys weren't even still racing. I don't think... Or assembly yeah. or nothing like that. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, man. It was it was good to watch and awesome to watch it. And uh, we, we did a lot of... We did do a lot of virtual coverage of it as well. Uh, you know, and I forgot. I forgot. I forget. We, we've made so much content. I forget yeah. a lot of it. Oh man, who was that who took that big wreck? Was that Mayfield? Oh, it might have been. Might have oh, been. Mayfield, yeah. There's Mayfield right there. That was some good. These are some good camera angles. Oh! <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> I forgot about that. Let's go back. I forgot about that. I think we obviously did say something about that because. Yeah, I remember now, but I had. <laughs> Can you rewind it a bit? The marshal. I am just, looking like, for it now. The marshal just totally like uh, the Superman. Marshal did it for. Did, he was look. Woo, he jumps over whoa. a car. Superman jumps on top of the pipe with Dakota's car. That's dedication. <laughs> that is yeah, dedication. That yeah, that saved Dakota probably like an extra five seconds. That one jump. Occasion. All right, let's move on. Uh, so Mayfield takes the sweep there and continues his dominating ways, and then we move on to 2022. Now this was this was this was this was a big one. This was yeah. 2022. JQ, you know, run the fox side with Mayako. You know, they're going out there for five weeks earlier, testing, doing all this type of stuff. Oh man, now this this DNC, I made sure to come in for the weekend prior. I weren't missing none of this. You can you felt like something was gonna happen, right? You felt like something big was gonna happen. So at Revelation, practicing watching him, watching the team go through all the troubles. I remember the 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 um the that design. Remember you had that design where the arms kept breaking or the hinge pins kept breaking. And so yeah, finally, yeah. I remember I'm like I'm there for all this. Like you went to our Airbnb, it's just fucking boxes of pots and tires and fuck shit everywhere like the living room is just like some big wrench room i'm sure in a room of mikey b sleeping on the floor he's pissed off i'm snoring it was it was madness zankatine was there bertine everybody yeah it was a good another good show in front of the european guys uh ron of showed great potential early out i, I can't remember how it I, well, I know he won e-buggy, but uh, e-buggy was right. He DQ'd e-buggy, if I remember correctly. Um, no, well, David actually ended up DQing around in every single class, I believe. But he he had like a good round and then not so good rounds. Uh, mm-hmm. But interestingly enough, uh, Born Horse DQ'd Nitro buggy. I kind of right. forgot about that, but he he finished in second. But yeah, he uh, Horse, that S yeah. He made that move from t- techno to S he wanted yeah, to prove a lot point. Of, yeah, it was a lot of drivers and a lot of like new cars, mm-hmm. four drivers. So lots kind of, of like this year. Kyosho. Yeah, kind of like this year, but yeah. lots went to Kyosho. Born Horse moved to S Works, and then obviously the whole Mayako team was there. Um, oh, no, forget that. Yeah, that was, yeah, was good. Big, big year, dude. I used to, I used to, I was doing my. So I, this is the first year that I didn't go that I wasn't like in charge of anything. Yeah, I wasn't in charge of the pits. I wasn't in charge of anything. I was there like to do NNRC content. Yeah. Right. And I remember 
So cold going up in that damn corner. Like I would go up. Oh, pro nitro buggy mains, pro nitro buggy qualifier coming up. I'll go up there like, cause I want to watch intermediate. I'll go up there like halfway through intermediate qualifying for pro and got my little space and take my videos, man. It was, it was, a, it was a good weekend. Uh, a little bit of rain too. I think we had a long, Oh, I remember the shitty thing about this. Yeah. JQ basically last minute to book an Airbnb. Can I find one closer track? Hey, almost an hour away from the track. I, I give kudos to Pierre. Pierre made that trip back every night slower and I mean, faster and faster each night. I'll not forget. Each night. Like, I, I think Saturday night we had to get back. And then, um, yeah, man, it was a good good event. Uh, David was good in Truggy. He had a low-C Truggy. I remember Pierre building that, just sitting there like everybody's talking. He's sitting there at Revelation, just building this. He goes, oh, I've done this before. He's just wrenching. Like, it was a lot of hype, a lot of hype, you know, of course, tech engines. Oh, that was, that was, it was a lot, a lot of electricity going on. Um, David takes the win in e bug. I remember running on there, like, so happy for everything like that. And then Nitro Buggy was a dog fight, man. It was yeah. a dog fight, period. Um, yeah. well, behind Mayfield and Bornhorse, those yeah, two yeah, yeah. ran away at the start, and behind them, it was just, yeah, it was, yeah, I think all. Tessman, Fend, and Ronafog were the bottom three after the first or second lap. And then, you know, they ended up finishing third, fourth, and fifth. So, but that that was that was a tough fight for all of them. Oh man, that that was Mason Fuller. Was it was Mike yeah. Mason Fuller? It was like Dakota Fenn, Mason Fuller, Ronafog, all in and a couple other guys all embroiled in that mid pack fight. Uh and I just remember I was watching. I'm like, man, if he could just get away, like, you know, if you, if you, you, you just couldn't. And then like Bourne was just kind of was, I don't think he had nothing for Mayfield. Like Mayfield was just out there and you weren't beating him. And he just yeah. said, all right, I'm going to settle for second. I think I think I'm going to settle yeah. for second. And he ended up in second. And um, that's how it happened. Right. You know, and uh, so I think a good, good, good kind of S works puts their stamp like where her, like, I think that's the first year, I think, where we saw a big S Works presence. Uh yeah. obviously uh with Joe doing well. And they had a big team like the Camden Lime. I think they I think they had Tanner Danny, all them guys there that weekend. And that's when we first see like the powerhouse S Works coming up. Yeah. Now yeah. they're a powerhouse going into this race. Oh uh, yeah. yeah. So 2023, we kind of we, we have talked about it quite a lot. 2023. We we go to this track. It's supposed to rain all weekend. Like, we know it's going to rain. We know it's yeah. going to rain. They decide to build the track under the roof. We had the JQ and Pavitas incident at the bar. We had the JQ and a couple other guys incident after the hours. JQ should have just went to fuck him. Then he went home and when I had all that, we had the tent slashing, run off out sucking. You know, like, we go from we like we come into tw- like you know we come out of 20 2022 was such a good year like we're like yeah you know the last time all these guys met each other or f- raced against each other was 2022 at the at, in spain you know mm-hmm. so we're like going into 2024 and Angara's like uh uh-uh, uh i'm not coming no more i'm a world i'm two time world champion you yeah. guys gotta come see me right come see me i'm not coming over there and uh Oh, you know, we go in there like Ron Falk after coming off that, and that just, just didn't work. Like, there's Matrix tires. Oh, no offense, and Matrix is gonna get mad at us, but it's the truth. It is the yeah. absolute truth. Yeah, I remember, I remember talking with Joseph, and he said, like, when they were practicing at Thunder Rally, and David, for the first time, they had, you know, track time because during the day he said yeah they were fine like he didn't see anything and they were feeling good and then was the first time at thunder alley when they watered the track at night and david went out he said like yeah <laughs> it was like from another planet like he was so bad for some reason uh that yeah he knew he said he knew already then that it's going to be a tough time but obviously yeah uh, and that whole kind that's it's hard. unfortunate, right? Because that set the turn for the entire, you know, that the pits was packed. And of course, we had the tent slashing. 
which we all figured out what happened with that. Um, and then, like, your star guy not doing, you know, the guy that we think can beat this, can win this, he's just not even in the A final. Yeah. And I'm just he like... Was in, and, and not only A final, he was in the D final. I know. Yeah. I know. Was, but Tebow made it. Tebow made it. Tebow yeah. put it in the D, in the A. And uh, by the A, I think finished third in his B or fourth. Just missed it. Yeah. Uh, wasn't that short track? It just... It kind of... I, yeah, I, it changed a lot when they moved to the... I, I appreciate that. I appreciate that we still had the race and all that type of yeah. stuff. Um, it's better than not having a race. And people say, well, that, that race should have an asterisk. Yeah, maybe. It's st- well, still a race. So the, still still some of the best winner. Like, I think Figueredo had a good run. I think he finished sixth, if I'm not mistaken. Um, let me check. Um, uh, it was anyway Mayfield again, once again winning. Yeah, but it was um, Mayfield, and it was a battle to the end. By him and Fenn battled yeah. it out to the end. Mayfield takes the win. And then... um. It just kind of yeah. was like meh. It wasn't the same yeah. DNC. It was not the same DNC. And I think that's no fault to Joey. He can't control the weather. But um they, they got that track built under there, which was good. And we had a it was it was just weird. Like I just remember when that driver stand it was like mm, you can watch that. It was so quick to watch those cars go yeah. by. Mm, yeah. Mm. And but it made for some good racing. It made for some good ba- yeah. racing and some spectacular stuff going on but just didn't have that same uh big race that you got a track picked or you got no, i'm sorry looking at the wrong one but yeah, another one that was in 2023 it ended up being mayfield fan this was yeah, the Tessman original was, track yeah this was what the track was going to supposed to be like and mm-hmm. this was a nice track i think this is very close to what we have this year yes but i think this year is so maybe there's still a few of those big triples that I think would have no bridge, maybe no bridge. That was well, it's there on the right hand side. They have the yeah, but I said in this year we have no bridge. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And um, but then obviously uh, I don't have a picture of the small track, but I do have a picture uh, of you have a track. video of it. Let me see. Uh, you can if you can uh, bring that up. I mean, maybe. I have videos that I don't. Why am I not looking up my own videos? Yeah, well, this is what the track looked like uh, during the weekend. The outdoor track, if you can put oh, it. Oh, you up. got it there. Sorry. Yeah, this is the outdoor track on <laughs> on the weekend. So this is why, if you're watching this on video, you'll know why it was moved indoors. It's basically yeah, I used to yeah a foot of water at at most of the track. I I had days where I were like I think I weren't doing nothing and I would come up here and I did like a report. I said, Well, here's the track and they're in there. They were luckily they moved a lot of dirt that was here over to the yeah. right side of the track indoors. So at the at the at this fairground they have a very low like it's like this was designed to showcase animals and stuff like that, or do flea markets. It's a very low roof. Yeah. Um with lots of su- support bars and stuff like that, so it's like quad. It's um, it, they, they did the best they can. They built a very small track. I'm gonna bring up some video of it if we can. Um, one second, Max. So you have to watch this. Did, did you watch a lot of it? What do you think of it? Watching it because a lot of people online said it was great. They loved it. Oh, watching it online was. I think this was one of those. I, if I remember correctly, this was one of those years where I I thought the um, coverage was really good. I don't know if it was made easier by being indoors, but uh, uh, Live actually did a great job. So I'm kind of that. That's also why I'm really excited for this year because maybe they actually keep it up. Um, otherwise, I don't know. I have to say there was a little bit of an asterisk on this event after all. But to be honest, it, it, most of the guys at the top were the same. Obviously, you had some outliers in the main. You had some outliers not in the main in Pro uh, Nitro Buggy. And this was actually one thing I wanted to mention. This was the first time they had Pro e Truggy at DNC. And I, I, I went through these results because I didn't watch the mains last year. And to my surprise, I was like, okay, nobody ran it. But everybody did. Joey Bourdon won it and... Caden was second and Mason was third. But behind them, it was Rivkin, Ogden, Mayfield, Lutz, Canis, Heckert, Lil Bump, Drake, and Maruffalo. So 
I'm surprised. Like, how did Joey Bourdon just beat all of these guys in Etrogi last year? I I don't know. Hey, Joey Bourdon is very good in Etrogi. That's why. I I mean, I guess, but that was an interesting fact from last year. And I think just to kind of hype up Etrogi a little bit more, I know it's a stupid ass class. But I love each Ruggie. What are you talking about? But I have to say, it's here to stay. It's here to stay. So this year, everyone's running each Ruggie. So maybe, maybe for the first time ever, we're going to talk about each Ruggie on our post race uh, coverage a little bit. Why not? Each Ruggie is awesome. So here's a look at the, uh, there's a driver stand, the Pro Nitro. It was so cold up there, dude. Oh my yeah. gosh. It was so cold, Max. It was it it was just cold, wet, and miserable. Like your feet, like you would try to avoid a puddle, and then boom! Next thing you know, your feet are wet, and it just stayed wet the entire day. Your pits was wet. It was just, it just sucked because this is all asphalt. The good thing is that you're not in mud. You're in asphalt. Yeah. Like you're on yeah. asphalt. Uh so it was a good it was a good weekend, man. Let me watch the start. This was crazy, crazy stuff right here, man. Crazy stuff. Only yeah. twelve people in the main. And you know what? At one time, I thought Tebow was going to win this. Oh, yeah. Tebow, Tebow was coming through the pack really fast at one point. Uh, I think he ended up having his brake cam come loose, so he only had front brake or rear brake, whichever it was. Oh, yeah. I remember brakes being a big yeah. discussion after this. Yeah. yeah, And, yeah, that, that basically killed it, but he was looking really fast. It, it could have been interesting because he was much faster than and uh, Mayfield and Tesman at the midpoint of the race, so he was mm-hmm. catching them. But yeah, Fender and Tesman and Mayfield pretty much fought for the entire 45 minutes. Or oh, every day had so many changes of lead, so many changes of positions. But those three were up there the whole time. Yeah, and uh, I think Cole. Where did he finish? He finished. Uh, Cole finished in fourth, fourth actually. Yeah. So he did pretty well. I, he was yeah. kind of up there, but he was never like in the fight. A fully, mm-hmm. but yeah, he was all, all the throughout the whole May. He was in, he was up there. All right. Well, there's our blast from the past. You can see we won't be racing on this small track this weekend. We'll be racing on this beautiful piece of dirt art yeah, that uh, finger, fingers crossed, dude. <laughs> yeah, we'll be all right. Unless there's some freak yeah, I think so. storm of nature, we will be all right. All right. So that's enough about the past and our past experiences. Let's look at some of the main challenges. Of this race, and that is brought to you by Sidewinder Fuel. Morgan Fuel has been collaborating with many of the world's top drivers for over 40 years. This has enabled us to test our fuels in many of the most challenging situations and take the development of competition fuels to the next level. The result is Sidewinder, the market's most powerful racing fuel. This fuel has been track tested and proven by national and world champions such as Ryan Cavallari, Ryan Mayfield, Greg Degani. Mark Pavitas, and many more. Their top driver right now is the young little bump who just won Femka. Congratulations to him. These drivers appreciate that Sidewinder is blended perfectly for the high-performance needs of competitive racing. Don't let victory slip through your fingers. Purchase Sidewinder today. If you guys need some help purchasing it, let me know. I will get you sorted out. All right, Max. So, three favorites you have. Ryan Mayfield. Three, Three... Nitro buggy wins in a row. Very hard not to pick him. Yeah. Yeah, I think Ryan Mayfield, for sure, he's won five out of the seven Nitro buggies. Um, he's ran, he's won, I think, Truggy almost every year mm-hmm. since 2017. Um yeah, Tesman Tesman won it once, and then Cavalier won it once, but he's won so, so you have five or seven. Yeah, I think okay. Any class we're looking at, I think Mayfield is the number one favorite coming in. Okay. Yeah, he's won five out of seven in both buggy and truggy. Uh, e buggy, he's won many, but not all of them. I think e buggy is probably his weakest class at this event, and he still won it twice <laughs> before. So, <laughs> yeah. And then you have Dakota Fan still looking for the win in IC Buggy. He'd be looking to get a good victory under his belt this year. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think. Yeah, not with getting, you know, second big, big eight scale race. Hasn't, didn't do it at SIC. Didn't 
Um, you know, didn't do that AMS going into the end of the year either. Lost to Mayfield. Still coming off a good year for him. But yeah. he would want, he, like, Dakota Fan would want to have a Nitro buggy win here at DNC. And he can do it, in yeah. my opinion. Uh, and then Juan Carlos Canas, you have as your third favorite. Yeah, I think I yeah, go ahead. We've, talk, we've talked about this a lot now. Like, Canas, and is he good here? You know, can he come to America? We usually always talk about Amaro. But if we look at the past results, in last year he finished second in Ibagi. Um, I think he was he was in the main in Nitro. No, I'm wrong actually. Last year he wasn't in the main in Nitro, but in 2022, um, he was up there the whole time pretty much. Uh, sorry, now I'm screwing something up. 2020 he was up there the whole time. So he has done here done well here before yeah I, I i think with he was very fast at ams yeah with con- it, in consideration you know his last year's performance he was good at montpellier it, it, i'd say he's the strongest european driver at the moment really overall. you have jc3 yeah. over you know what i was i was trying to figure this out too who is my strongest european driver going into this event and even though my pick is going to stay the same. I had, I had JC three over runner Falk just because of what the form that JC three has been on lately. Yeah. Now he has not, he has not won recently, but he's come very close. He's been very competitive. He's been competitive every race he's been to, you know, yeah. uh, European championship, all that type of stuff. Also, I'd have to say, not uh, tires. So t- I see uh, JC Rob. I was thinking about that as well uh, because, yes, tires are always important. Now JC has been on the West Coast with Drake, all that type of stuff. Hot Race has been on the West Coast for some time now, too. I still think uh, it's going to be cold. It, it, it'd be cold when they have the main. I think that they won't have the mains at the end. I don't think they, they've now doing them where the kind of where people who are on the world can watch them early, yeah. the A final for the pros. So it depends on the temperature. Hard, hard, very hard to beat. I, I, if this was PMB, I'd be like, all right, JC tires. You got it. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, but yeah, yeah. at, uh, at, 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 at this race, at this track, I mean, uh, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. But, but I definitely think in form, it, form, very good. Yeah. Very good. Yeah, because he did well at this race with seismic tires in 2020. And last year, I think that's a very much of an outlier. He was in hot race tires. You know, I don't think those conditions were suited for hot race necessarily. Definitely wasn't suited for, you know, European drivers considering the, considering the size of the track and all of that. I think he's done well enough here where now that he is with JC tires, he's been to America a few times. He he can be considered right. the number he's got one that driver experience in under him. Yeah. I think now we can be like he's one of the three. I would not be surprised if he won. Yeah. I not wouldn't at all. be either. I yeah. wouldn't be surprised so, if he won at all. I think those three we talked about, Mayfield, Fend, and Kanas are going to be your three favorites. If Tesman were still running, I think Tesman with his form in the past two years could be. But I think those three are right now the three. You, do, you don't even have Mason Fuller up here. I don't, but I have him as potential winners. You know? That's right. That's what's up next because you have David Ronafalk, Brandon Rose, Baruffalo. Yeah. Well, he is. He has won on American soil. And he, yeah. he, he makes mains at this race. And yeah. he shows potential speed, but can he put it all together at the end? And then you have Mason Fuller. Wow. Yeah. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm taking Ronald Falk to win this. Yeah. This is this was one of the things I've said before in the podcast that with the X-ray chassis, you know, testament speed, not as well, not as good at this race. I have to correct myself a little bit because I was thinking purely of like, 2019, 2020, 2021. He had three years in a row where he didn't finish on the podium. He didn't even make the main in 2021. In 20, 
20, he no, I he was I think seventh, 2019 he was fourth, but really far behind. So those years were really weak ones with X-ray. But actually in 2022, yeah, in, in top three, his speed was good. Last year his speed was good. I have to correct myself that I think they have figured out the you know setup for X-ray on this track. So I kind of said before that Rana Falk will have a tough time. Now I'm a bit more lenient to the possibility of him winning, especially now that he has open tires. So no consideration about tire. I'm assuming he'll run with hot race no matter what, but I imagine if, if there's a chance that HP is better, um, JC is better, he'll switch mm-hmm. to it. Mm-hmm. So, well, yeah. I agree with you there. I think also his he's... So I, I've gotten to know David, and he's not going to be happy about his performance at Montpellier. Yeah. Or, you know, and he, I, I think he needs a good, he needs a win. Or this is what I thought I was thinking about this this morning when I was looking at your notes. He needs a win, or he needs a hard fought battle for second, where like they miss it by milliseconds going across the line. He has confidence. He needs, yeah. Listen, he, he has confidence. J- David Ronaldo has confidence, but even the best confidence can be shaken when you have a. And you don't have the best year, and then you're starting on his new chassis. I'm sure pressure's on to do things. I think he's going to be able to take that and turn it all into a win. Uh, he yeah. has ex- he has experience at this race. He he's going to be calm, cool, and collected over there in the X-ray pits. He's got Pierre there. I saw them like you know they're not got a big massive team, but they got like HRCR there. Brian Eider's going to take care of them, all that type of stuff. So I think he'll be very comfortable. I, I think. I wanna. I have him. Oh, I. I think he's gonna win it. No. Just uh, anything can happen. Uh, I. Yeah. I don't think Brandon Rose can win it. Where you have up her, even though coming off a win at S, I could be wrong. Yeah. But I think if Brandon Rose could got a top five at this race, it'd be great. Yeah, uh, I, I put Brandon Rose up there mostly because he's kind of an unknown, you know, because he was with Hot Race Tires last year. He was doing well, but like making a lot of mistakes, having some issues here and there. You know, he was podiuming big races. DNC wasn't what it's normally. Maybe, you know, who knows? Maybe after SIC, he's got that confidence. He's got that feel on his on his car and tires. Absolutely, and absolutely. Who could knows? Be. Could be. Yeah, could be. wouldn't be surprised. But I, at all. Yeah, but realistically, yeah, I I see. Of I, these like potential winners, Ronafok and Fuller would be the ones that would surprise me the least. But I think both of them leave enough of question of their performance that it's hard to say. Because for David, he has a new car. We have not seen him on tracks like this. Um, he hasn't had a good last year. Montpellier was kind of up and down. So it, it's really open to what his form right now, how does the car work for him? At least he's had good good preparation. He went to uh, practice earlier on. He was last week in practicing already. Yeah, I think I think he'll do well. It, it remains to be seen if he can actually win it. But if if it was a race that he could win with X-ray, I I'd be guessing this could be mm-hmm. the one you'd expect him to. Now, Mason Fuller, I I think he can win this too. I would not be I would yeah, I would be happy yeah. if he won this. Uh I think the S-Works team's coming in very strong, very yeah. strong, lots of confidence, lots of lots of big hitters on yeah. that team. And they're going to have a lot of information flowing through there. And yeah. everybody's kind of like, you know, JC, everybody's on the same program, like JC3, Tires, everybody kind of in that. I, 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 Mason Fuller, I can see winning this as well. But they're all going to have to be Mayfield. Um I heard people. I I I, I do not believe Marco Barufolo can win this, Max, at all. Really? I do not believe Marco. Barufolo I I I put him there because he has TQ this event in Ubuggy before. He has been good at this event before, and last time he came over to America, he won. That that's that's where I'm based. No 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 no. He did not win at AMS. He was fast at AMS. Oh, that's true. That's true. Yeah, yeah I forgot he went there. 
Okay. So very very little support on the WIRC over there for, for Barufo. Even though he doesn't, he'll probably be with, he's always with Nicola anyway. So yeah, I don't the thing is, he was, he was good at this race with X Ray as well, with uh, Techno too. He was good. <sighs> no matter the car, he's been good at this event. <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's made the main multiple times. I don't know. I, uh, I don't, I don't have, I, I'll, I have. T- I'll tell you, he'll be good most likely. But if he can, I don't know if he can really keep it together. I would put Boots and Figueredo over Barufalo. Maybe not Figueredo. Well, we'll see how Figueredo does. Figueredo's still got, like, got yeah. a lot more time on his car. But uh, again, he's going to be with, we'll talk about them in a second. But I, I do not have, Mark. I do not agree with that. I do not have Mark Barufalo as potential winner. I have everyone on the Brandon Rose, Mason Fuller. Let me think who I would add to this list. Um... So let's see, we got, we got, we agree, Mayfield, Fenn, Canas, Ronald Falk. I, I don't, I don't have Brandon Rose as winning this. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, B. Rose. I like you, but I just, I, I hope you surprise me. Mason Fuller. There's five names stick out to me. I'm trying to think. Of, what if we got Rivkin? Oh, yeah. I should have added him because that's true. That I should have added him for sure. Yeah, Rivkin. Of course, possibly be on this list. Yeah. They've been out there. They've been pra- remember that uh, associates been having track days out her. Yeah, all this type of stuff. So you you definitely forgot about Rifkin. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So I would I would add Rifkin if Rifkin to this list of people to write. Oh, her. Yeah, and uh, I would have like, him in there yeah. instead of Barufalo. Yeah, I I put I if we put these five we talked about in order, I think yeah I agree with you. If Barufalo or um, Rose would win, that would be very unlikely. But I believe it has a, po- a hinge of possibility. But for Rivkin or um, Fuller or Ronnefog to win, I think that's a realistic, realistic assumption that they could, all of those three would win. And for Ronnefog and for Fuller, I think we talked about it already, but I think it's more obvious. Uh, we're sorry, Ronnie Falk and Fuller. I think it's more obvious. Um, and we talked about it, but for Ripkin, what I feel is he is like the biggest argument for him being a potential winner. The fact that he has beaten Mayfield, I believe now twice in a row at this track, or was it that the last race was at, um, last race was at, um, Thunder Alley, but Rivkin in these West Coast, uh, specifically Californian, a little bit blown out tracks. He has been really good. They have updated their car to that like rear, about rear would buy his car. Yeah, they ran it before as well, but they've gotten more comfortable with it. The reason why I probably didn't think of him was if this was any other race in America, he wouldn't be a potential winner. He hasn't shown to be that good in eight scale recently, especially on the East Coast. Okay. All right. All right. Mm-hmm. But here, I, I, yeah, I, I got it. I do not agree with Barufalo. I, I, th- I throw Rifkin in there. I would, I would take Barufalo out and put Boots in there, personally. Yeah, well, we'll talk about him in, in mm. a second. We're going to talk about our Beach RC Dark Horses. Thank you to Beach RC for all their continued support. BeachRC.com, the racer's one-stop online hobby shop. Choose from all the popular brands and variety in stock with super fast shipping and great customer service. BeachRC.com still has the local hobby shop feel with all the benefits of the internet. BeachRC.com is the exclusive distributor for Ultimate Racing, S-Works. Pro Circuit Racing Tires, Nitro Lux Fuels, and Assault RC Performance Products. So fill up your cart and check out at BeachRC.com today. Thank you to BeachRC for all their continued support. They had the Palmetto Classic this past weekend. There, uh, I was watching Real and Trigger, a great show last night uh, with him and Chase. And uh, thank you to Brent for all the support and everybody. Uh, if you guys want to, there's an affiliate link for BeachRC on there. But they're bringing us, uh, relent- I like your sections, the Beach RC Dark Horse. You have to split up into Europeans and Americans. Daniel Pariente, I don't think he's going to make the main. I think he'll be close, but yeah, I, I agree with you. I don't think he's won 
like if he make the main, I think that'd be a really good result for him. But I think he'll be around the B main because this is a very, very un unconventional setup for him. The lack of practice, the surface. Mm -hmm. But yeah, at, the, it, yeah. at the same time, he might be just a really excited young man, and you never know. He this might be his time. Yeah, that yeah, that's the thing with Pariente that. He could surprise us kind of like Barufula and Figueredo did in 2018, you know? Absolutely, absolutely. I, that, that's kind of why I put him up there in the dark horses because we don't really know, you know, Barufula. Mm -hmm. in, in Italy, they race on tracks that, you know, are really dusty, somewhat blown out. But at the races, they aren't like that. So it's hard to say, like, what, like when they practice, do they know how to drive on tracks like this? Because Barufula absolutely loves these American-style tracks, for example. But in there, we don't really know. Like he could be good on this. He probably not completely sure himself yet. Like what's his uh, skill level at these type of tracks? And he's so young. I think he'll be able to adjust no matter what. But it'll be interesting to see. On on a plus side, he has techno with him. It's not like he's alone in a team. He'll be he he'll be helped a lot. I'm not sure, but I believe he might be traveling by himself with Elias. No, I saw him. He's with Elias. I think Elias has got him. I, yeah, I, but I, I don't think he has, he has his dad. I don't know if he's there. At least he wasn't in the pictures. I, didn't spot I haven't him. seen his dad in the pictures yet. Yeah, but he if he's traveling with Elias, I think it'll be interesting because he'll just need to focus on driving. The American team will set up his car. They'll know what to do. You know, It'll everything be new for him, but he doesn't have to, you know, go back and think like, oh, what did I do at this mm -hmm, event? Mm -hmm. like, It'll be a great experience for him. Yeah. A great experience. Oh, 100%, for him. Yeah. Uh Yal Figueredo, I think, makes the main. Elliot Boots, I think yeah. I think Elliot Boots is a top five play. Top five, possibly top three. Yeah, Boots Boots is an interesting one. Cause considering he's warm lately, he has he has been strong. But then again, it, it's he's kind of one of those drivers who has to click in, uh, during the practice. Mm -hmm. You know, he has to find some form of, you know, confidence early on that he can keep up and then do. Well. Has won in America before? He has won in America before, and he has done well at this event before. So it wouldn't I be have, unlikely I, for him to do well. But he, it's a bit of a question mark still. Like, can he do well? Mm -hmm. I I I would I would out of all these I. Believe Elliot Boots, Barton. I, I I have Barton. I think if he makes the main and a top ten, that's good. Anything better than that would be great for him. Yeah. Uh, but it's well, again, we come down to Ricardo Barton, Infinity. No other type of, you know. Uh, I mean, they probably have simulated tracks like or tracks like this in the UK. We we shall see. I don't. I don't know if Seismic's gonna make him stick on if they don't have a if he can Ogo. run with Avatar, huh? Ogo. Ogo. Sorry, Ogo. Uh, yeah. Will oh well, maybe I don't know. Ogo might have a tire for this. They seem to have a tire that works in the southeast. Um, or will he be able to go on? Will he effectively be Ogo if something don't work? I can go on whatever I want. That would be a good advantage for him. So we shall see. So Barton, I have over. I I think. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think I, I think I think Berton is kind of like I'd put Boots over Berton, but I think they are they are in a similar you know boat. Both can be good or they can be okay, but I don't think either one of those will be really really bad. But it'll it'll be interesting to see. I think Figueroa will make the main. I'd be interested like. He could be also really good. I, I wouldn't like count out Figueredo because this is kind of his event, especially in qualifying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'd say Figueredo mm -hmm. could really surprise us. Okay. Berton, I, I, wouldn't argue that. I wouldn't argue for that. Yeah. Berton, no I don't argue. see him making top five, but he he could be in the in the main. But mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Now let's have a look at the Americans. You have Tyler Jones. I, I do not have Tyler Jones been in this race. Not winning, but I think, you know, one of the guys who can... I, I would consider putting him in the potential winners, but realistically, I don't see that happening. I, I see Tyler Jones surprising, because he already surprised us at uh, SIC. And 
he has done well at you know rough events before. He, he might not even well be going. Into... He's not going. I don't think so. I, I don't even see any any like Tyler Jones. Uh, I'm pretty sure I saw him at the resort uh, in the practice place. Maybe he's not going. <laughs> Maybe I'm just. Like, I mean, I don't see any him. cars already for for DNC type of stuff. He might be there. Uh, I do think that Frankie Contreras Jr. will be very fast. Right, this is like home track. I think yeah. he'll. I think he'll surprise a lot of people. I think he'll make the main. What he will do when he makes the main is what we'll we'll see what happens now. If he can, yeah. I, out of, I think Frankie. I do. I think he can win this. No, 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 no. no I mean, he no, no, no. he may be. Yeah. No, 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 no. I I think kind of like the the American dark horses. Uh, I don't see Tyler Jones on the starting list, so. <laughs> so no, 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 he's out already. I think I, I think I think that's out from the dark horses. I thought he'd be going, uh, but yeah, no, not no, going. I don't think so. so. I haven't seen him do too much eight scale lately. Uh, to be honest, from uh, the FCJ, American, man. Uh, FCJ, I, I think is. I don't think he's a dark horse. I think that. I think him making a man isn't a beat. He's done it before. Um, so I don't think I, I I think what if he what he can do in the main, I think he'll make the main. I think he'll be fast right off the bat, especially in Truggy and all that stuff. Um, like he, this kid has so many laps at this track, very hard. He he is very fast at this track. Arandondo fast too. I don't know if he'll make the main. I don't know. Yeah, but I think I think this will be a very this, stacked B main, Max. Yeah, th- this is why I wanted to include because. I kind of included these under the tagline of Californians because JBRL, uh, all these like local races, now TNR was at this track. They have so much experience of this specific venue, this dirt, this type, like how it will blow out, you know, all of that stuff. I think both Arredondo, well, frankly, I think I'd put above Arredondo, but I like, I think both of these guys will at least make the B, but these could be one of those guys who, you know, surprise and make the A, you know, kick out a really fast European or maybe someone like Ogden who, you know, we don't know how he'll perform. But I think the Californians, there's always one who makes the main, you know. So two years ago it was Contreras, then it was. Um, I think Contreras is going to make the main. I think so too, yeah. But last year I think uh, it was. What was his name? Um, with the HP driver from California, Spinrad. Yeah, he made oh, Spinrad. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it, it could be, be no be surprise. Fast, yeah, be I think Contreras or Arredondo or in the craziest scenario, both could make the main, which would mean a lot of the like last two top guys. This is his type Spinrad, of track. Maybe, yeah, this yeah, but I don't know if he's been racing as much this year. Well, he's back out in California now, so he might have been at this race. Uh, yeah. Seth Van Dalen, I have not. So Seth didn't come to SIC. Uh, he he's been. He, I know he's been to. May have been to some. Uh, he might have been. I think he, I don't know if he did the techno race. He's been very quiet, but he does do well at this race. So let's see what he can do this weekend. I know is there. I saw a picture of him earlier. So. Yeah. Um. Some guys heard. I think you have that. You haven't missed. You don't have no Lee Sets on her. I think he'll do well. Yeah. Um, yeah. Caden Fuller, Little Bump, Ryan Lutz. Oh, yeah, completely. Yeah. But I think Ryan, I I'm not sure if Bumps, a Little Bump's going. He's going. He's going. He's flying. Okay. I think he's flying from Vietnam over, from what I'm told. But what about Ryan Lutz? He's been on, on a tear. Oh, yeah. AKA I, so yeah. Ninja Samurai out there. Little Bump's not on the starting list, at least. Maybe it's not. I don't know. I heard them guys are saying that he's going to be there last night. Uh, but okay, okay. Ryan Lutz, what about him? Yeah, I think I think Lutz is one of those that I kind of missed here. He's one of those guys who I'm very, very... I bet sure you can win e-buggy. He can win e-buggy. Yeah, he could be really good in e-buggy. I think... He can win it. Yeah. yeah. I, I think he could... His form has been pretty good lately. So I think he, he can... Um, yeah. His package is good. He seems to be, you yeah. know, he's been racing a lot. Uh, yeah. I, I can see a top five for lots of better. Yeah, I, I see lots easily making all the mains. And then, like, e-buggy especially, I could see him make a top five or a podium. 
or even a win. Nitro Buggy, I don't see a win. Maybe a top five. Chuggy, uh, that's kind of like in the open. He could be okay with Chuggy, but I think E-Buggy will be his strongest class. But um, yeah, Nitro Buggy, I can see him do a top five, top three, something like that. So yeah. he's, he's definitely up there. Um, we, I know we're missing some people here. We got, uh, what about Cavallari out there in the Sparker? Will he make the main? I think Cavallari will make the main. This is kind okay. of the race where he always makes the main, no matter what. Um, so I think, but I don't think he'll be doing anything special. Uh, another name we haven't talked is um, Ogden. Ogden. I think, yeah, I think he he will be one of those guys who is on the brink. He might make it straight to the A. He might qualify in the B. Bump up I think Ogden's going to be fast. Up. I think out there, T- this is like yeah. TZ's base. He could be, yeah. He, I think Ogden is kind of like depends on the weekend. You know, he could be really fast. He could be Ogden could, A. Ogden could be, yeah. man, Ogden, like we said, Ogden could be either in the B man or in this and anywhere yeah. in between. Yeah, yeah. So um, I think that's somebody we're not looking at. He he would need something like that as well. There's a guys out there that need good results. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, but they're all going to be chasing that Mayfield, I think. Not at yeah, the beginning. Yeah. Not at the beginning, because Mayfield does his proven he doesn't have to qualify well. What do you guys yeah. think? Who do you think is gonna take the win and, and nitro buggy uh and whatnot? I know intermediate's gonna be stacked. I, I know I was listening to uh Chase and as guys talk about it, I think that uh he thinks that Jimmy Fishback, who's been doing a lot of work out there in California, been really fast, is gonna do very really well. I have not looked at the intermediate uh entry list, so I do apologize. Him and Jared Kosa Korea, Kosa Korea might do well. Should do well. They have them in them. Mm. Um, I'm trying to think who else in 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 pro that we're missing because they take 15. Who okay? Who bumps up from the B main? Who's your? I think it's maybe three bump up. Um, I'm saying Heckert and Joey Bourdon will be there fighting for the bump up. We dude, we have we have not said anything about Heckert. We forgot completely forgot about him. I have him in my dark horses. You have it. All right. I can see that. I think he's in the main, no problem. I think he does pretty well. Yeah. I, 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 I see him in the main quite easily, but I, it's, he's usually one of those very quiet drivers in the main. He'll have like a quiet sixth once in a while. He's been putting in a lot of work. And yeah. He's been he's out almost, there. Mayfield. He's now first big, big, uh, well, first DNC with Techno. I think that will be a positive for him because he'll have that support behind him. I think. Yeah, with S Works, yeah, he'd always had the support, but I think he was a little bit on his own a little bit of time. But now with Techno, I think he'll be more confident at least. What about Wiggins? We'll forget. Jesus. I don't think, I think Wiggins is like bottom of B main, mid B main. Yeah. No way. Yeah, I think so. I don't have him. I don't have him in there. I don't have him in there. I have him. I have him in the main. It's gonna be. It's, we won't know until Sunday. What about Bornhorst? He's been good at this Bornhorst too. Jesus. All right. Here's something. How many? How many? How many Europeans make the final? Well, Canas and Rona Fog are like a pretty done deal. I'd okay. say Figueredo and Barufalo are like quite certainly making the main. Same with Boots. I'd say. Five is very likely. Less than five is possible, but minimum of three. Um, if I if I'd make a pick, I'd go with I'd go with maybe five Europeans. Yeah, I don't see two. I I, I don't see Berton being a confident A main pick. To be honest. Okay. I'll say it's Canas, um, Barufalo, Bronafog, uh, Figueredo, and uh, how many is that? Canas, Barufalo, Bronafog, Figueredo, and then, uh, yeah, I would need, yeah, I think either Pariente or uh, Berton will make the main. So I think it'll be five, but no more than five. I don't really see. I, uh, I think, I think we see JC3, Boots, Bronafog, Figueredo. Oh, yeah, Figueredo. Boots. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think uh, I think four, maybe more. Yeah, um, I, think, I think five is a safe pick. Six is like the absolute maximum, I'd say. Yeah, I don't see. I, I, I six will be hard. I don't think it'd be any more yeah. than that. Um, yeah. 
What chassis company has the most drivers in it? I, I think S Works. S Works. I mean, maybe. But to be honest, it'd be hard not to pick Techno because they just have so many good drivers. Who? So here you have Mayfield. Mayfield. Then, Seth Van Dalen. Van Dalen, Heckert. Um, then you have uh, Wiggins, Figueredo. Wiggins is a possibility. Figueredo is a possibility. I think even Par- uh, Pariente is a possibility. You had Arnando as a possibility too. He's a possibility, but he's like, I think Techno has like five to seven drivers in the main. What? Yeah. I oh, think Asrax, so. I think Asrax can have Mason, Caden, Lime. Maybe not Lime. Maybe not Lime. He'll I see. think Lime Lime is kind of on the similar like Arredondo and Pariente. You know, I think he's All right, kind listen. of... Yeah. S-Works, JC3, Bornhorse, Fuller. Fuller, another one. <laughs> um, uh, I think... B-Rose. Oh, yeah, B-Rose. B-Rose. Do we have anyone else? Line could be surpri- could surprise you, man. He's been racing a lot. He'll make it, too. We should have probably had him mm-hmm. in our Dark Horses over... Well, he should yeah, be Lime in is, our dark Lime horses. Is, he probably should. I think, to be honest, I see three S-Works driving, drivers making into the main for sure, and then two of them fighting in the B main. And for Techno, I see four of the drivers making it in quite comfortably, and then three of them fighting in the B main. Okay. So I, so, think, I think Techno will actually have the most drivers in the main, I that's my bold pick. Okay, that's that's I I I, I could not argue with that. Yeah, I, I it's going to be tech work, techno or s works. I think either of those two. I um, mean, associated if they get really crazy, but I don't see you know enough guys for them. Yeah, I don't I don't know who else is uh, racing there. All right, Ford, well, Ford and Rivkin and I think you know, I think we're just going to end this by making our hot race. Hot picks for this week. We're going to just do hot picks. We're going to give our top yeah. three, and then you know what we want to. What you what we want you guys to do is uh, also let us know. So the, uh, let us know who you think is going to make it in the comments. So we're going to take our hot race tires, hot picks this week. We're not going to do hot and cold. We're going to take our picks. Thank you to hot race tires. I see that. Uh, uh, I I know that. Um, Nicola was so happy to post that thing with Rana Falk and the hot race tire. I know he was happy. Good to see because I know he, he really likes uh, Rana Falk quite a lot. Uh, he's very confident in his tires and his products. Hot race tires of some of the most popular tires around the world. They're looking to get themselves uh, another uh, DNC win as well. And uh, I guess we're going to make our hot picks, man. All right. Give me a top three right off the bat. My top three for Nitro Buggy is um, Kanath, um, Mayfield, and Fenn. Okay. I'm going Ronafalk, Mayfield, Kanath. Kanath. Oh, I feel so bad not picking Mason Fuller. Okay. If... Now, who do you think can come in and beat your? If I don't know how to pose this, so you, you're all right. So all right, so you are you are Canas Mayfield fan. I am Rana Falk Can Mayfield Canas. So we kind of have Falk, Mayfield, yeah, yeah. We're writing them down so we know. Yeah, and I, I, I'm, I'm actually quite confident. I'm with Canas, with with Canas, and then. Mayfield, he's like a solid pick, and then Fend in third. I mean, it's hard Ron, to pick. I, 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 I say Ron, in that race. Yeah, I think all of those, but I think Ronafal could beat Fend, but I see a really tough battle with Ronafal beating Mayfield. It would have to be like, um, you know, a we bit of a see. surprise. We'll find what out. About what about Truggy? Truggy. Truggy. Let's do some picks for Truggy. I think Mayfield takes Truggy. Um, 
Mayfield, Fend, Ronapo. Mayfield, Fend, Ron. I think that's I think that's pretty good. Mm-hmm. That's like a really safe for Chuggy. I am gonna go because I don't think Canas has ever really looked good on a Chuggy. Like even at uh, AMS, he was fast, but he didn't look that good. Um, Mayfield on the Techno Chuggy. It's a big track, so yeah. You know, I'm gonna go a bit of a sleeper pick. I'm gonna go with um, a Fuller in Chuggy, uh, Mason, a uh, Mason Fuller, and then I'm gonna go with um, Fend in second, and then Mayfield third. Okay, Fuller. I Very American. So uh, e- e- buggy. I have Fuller taking him in or lots. So I I gonna I, I have Fuller lots, Fend. I want to say lots Fuller fan, but I think Fuller is really good. I I think Fuller's just badass and e buggy. I I I think he could be nitro buggy too. So yeah, I'm I'm gonna go with. I think e buggy is tough. E buggy is really tough because we don't really know. Well, e truggy is gonna be stacked too. So let's give us some e truggy. Let me also do e truggy too. Yeah. I'm gonna for e buggy. I'm gonna go with uh, lots and okay. uh, Mayfield, and then Fend. Okay, e truggy. I don't know who's all in it. I don't. I, I haven't even looked at the entry list for e truggy. Everyone's running e truggy. <laughs> oh, I okay. It. It's so, crazy. everyone's running it. Who do you have? I think Mayfield rips. No man. Hey, that Kyosha e truggy's fast too. Lots. I think Mayfield takes the win in e truggy. Yeah. Mayfield, I'm just winging at her. Mayfield, lots fend. Um, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna go a little bit wild. I'm I'm saying Caden Fuller takes each game. Not He's a bad pick. Guys. Not a bad pick. He's one of those guys who like somehow dominates each game. So not a bad pick at all. Um, I'm gonna Caden Fuller. Then I'm gonna go with. Um, I don't see fend. Doing well in e truggy Mayfield is a solid a lot of pick. classes to run. Oof, four classes. Yeah. Well, I, I split I'm up between two with... days. It's split up between two days. Yeah. Is e truggy on Nitro Buggy Day though? Yeah, e truggy is a Nitro Buggy Day. Okay, so the yeah, so that's that's probably why they are doing it to get some track time on yeah. on Sunday. Uh and it, well, e truggy is just growing, growing, growing. Hey, man, all I know is I'm looking forward to some good racing, some good coverage. It will be all live on Live RC. Uh, starts tomorrow. Uh, I'm sure it's, it's three hours behind. It's uh, it's California time, so it's three hours behind EEST. Uh, I'm looking forward to their coverage as well. And when I do have time, I'll be watching this when I can. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to be like, man, I wish I would have went. But I'm going to enjoy myself at the banquet, having fun with everybody there as well, too. And, yeah, it's going to be interesting. We'll, we'll know at the end of uh, sometime Sunday. That's for sure. I think I think this is the first time we actually write them up what we picked. So now it'll yeah. be funny to see, like, did, did we, like, actually suck? Because usually we just forget what we picked. Absolutely, absolutely. Kind of for the laughs. All right. Well, Max, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Uh, let, actually, you guys, let us know what you think, who our winners will be. Uh, let us know who your winner, your picks are in the comments. Uh, we appreciate that. Don't forget to hit that like, sub, notification button as well on YouTube if you listen to this. Uh, this is our deal. I'm, I'm, I'm hyped up for this. I, I know I don't yeah. seem like it, but, I don't, you know, I always learn, like, don't get too excited. You know, it's just, it's good to see. This is, this is, these type of races like when I, I, I know because I've been there. So I know like all the going around scene every like today is all about that. Like today, hey, what's up? Haven't seen you for a long time. You know, you're so excited. There's so much energy going on right now in uh Paris and there's Paris fairgrounds right now that uh I know that buzz and I, I miss that. I crave that. I miss that. But uh it, it's all good, man. I, I look forward to watching the racing. Live RC, we'll be posting all the links. Max, when he isn't out drinking, we'll be posting uh reports about it uh let us know what you think if our picks are going to do who do you think is going to win let us all know in the comments uh, i think we're going to wrap it up this week and hopefully we will get together next week i will be on the road uh, i look forward to seeing everybody this weekend at the frcc banquet and i look forward to seeing everybody at callahan the following week 
But uh, let uh, we will try to get together. I'm going to try to get in the camper and record with you tomorrow so we can do a recap. Uh, maybe see, hopefully we get somebody that can join us. We'll see. But Max, I want to thank you for your time. Enjoy your weekend. Good luck to everybody out there at uh, DNC this weekend. We guys hope you guys enjoy your time. Put on a show for us all here at home watching. And good luck to all the competitors. Good luck to if you're going to your DNC for the first time. Enjoy it. it. It's a great experience. I think everybody should put it on their bucket list to go check it out, along with a lot of other races. But if you're an RC enthusiast, uh, go to this race. 25th iteration of this race. And uh, uh, it's looking to be very nice out there with the weather. And I look forward to watching all the cool racing this weekend, Max, as much as I can. All right, Max. I think with that, we're going to just call it wraps on this podcast. Uh, we'd like to say thank you to all of the NNRC squad around the world. We can't do this without you guys. Thank you for the continued support. Thank you to the patrons of the NNRC and the YouTube members. You guys help us out extra. We greatly appreciate that. If you wish to contribute to the podcast, you can. Links for that in the written description of this podcast. Remember, showing these companies some love. Show us the podcast some love. We want to thank all of them for their continued support. They are Invisible Speed, High Tech RC, Course Attack USA, Sidewinder Fuel, Myako, Beach RC, Techno RC, Clinic RC, Stacked RC, Racecraft USA, RC Box Club, Call RC, Elite RC Productions, Florida RC Championships, RC Body Armor, SJ Racing Builds, House of RC. Good luck to our driver, David Ronafalk and Mason Fuller at this race this weekend. Uh, and may they do well and kick ass and take names. And every, you know, uh, I think I've seen we're going to see something special this weekend. So we're going to see something special. Uh, with that said, Max Nitrous the Glory, E Buggy pays the bills. Max and Lefty, we're out. You guys, enjoy your DNC. Enjoy your RC wherever you're doing it. And uh, we will see you next weekend. Bye-bye.